Today I have here Kylie Ireland and some random dude off the street that she brought in. Hi. <laughs> he's, he's got a nice accent, so I figured maybe I'd keep him. Well, the, you provided me with gin, so <laughs> thanks for all this gin. <laughs> what are we doing here today? Just kidding. No, this is vodka. her lovely husband, Andy Appleton. Hello. Who apparently I Snapchat stock. Yeah, she does. True. That's a true I'm story. totally obsessed with him. She is obsessed with me. It's I, I really weird. start to worry sometimes. <laughs> So just so everybody knows, we were doing... Okay, so let's actually talk. Let's introduce you guys for what you do. So Kylie was a... It still is. A very Wait, famous you'd porn never star. never stop being that person. Right, exactly. <laughs> you, like, when you're president, you're still like Mr. President forever. And that's the comparison what? you make. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks right. for that. Okay, let's pretend <laughs> that, like it was two years ago and I was making that comparison. Much better. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, great. <laughs> so um, Kylie and Andy now do art direction and they do a lot of amazing set building for myself and for Wicked Pictures and for Digital Playground. Okay. And you're kind of like the only set designers in the adult industry. We are. We're yeah. kind of the only, the only game in town. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're the best yeah. by default. Yes. But you really are we're the best. We're also the worst by default as well. <laughs> Good point. But we do win awards. Yes. We're How many kinda... awards have you guys won? Six. For set design, six. That's awesome. I, of course, as a performer, have won many more, but he never really? acknowledges that. How many have you won for as a performer? I actually don't even know. I mean, I won Best New Starlet when I got in, so uh-huh. that was right off the bat. And then I didn't win anything for 10 years, and then I started winning things again. Wow. It was like the Susan Lucci of porn for a while. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> funny. But, um, so I was going to – I was making some witty, humorous comment before we got – and then I forgot. I lost my train of thought. We introduced you guys. What was I talking about before? Uh, you would, uh, oh, yeah, my Snapchat obsession Snapchat. with you. That's yes. what it was. Yeah. Okay, so they were helping me on the set of DP Star 3. 3, yeah. 3. And um, I was Snapchatting, and a lot of this was, like, during the setup because it took us a long time to set up for everything. And I didn't realize because I I was Snapchatting and I was Instagram storying and I was also obviously doing all, like, the production side work and getting things organized. So I wasn't really, like, paying attention to what I was shooting on Snapchat and kind of putting it together in a chronological <laughs> order. And then was it you who said to me at the end of the day, like, Holly, are you obsessed with me? Or was it Danny Daniels who said something? It was Danny it was Daniels, Danny. yeah. Yes. She was checking in. And she was like, it's all Andy. So she was like, Holly, are you obsessed with Andy? I'm like, what are you talking about? And I go back and I look, and literally my whole Snapchat is Andy. The entire day. Like the whole- <laughs> it's because Andy doesn't actually work. He just, like clowns around all the time yeah and so he's entertaining yes he's and, you very know, entertaining you point a camera at him and he dances he's kind of like the that's, monkey that's true i'm like a large monkey in a hat <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so apparently i'm obsessed with you now so this is why i had to have you guys both on my podcast and let me tell you something i've had some like big names on this podcast, like very famous porn stars. You two were the fucking hardest ones to book. Like, you were never available. Like We're, we're incredibly important. Yes, it yeah. was very hard for me to get you on. Yeah, but we're here. You Look. are. Yay. I know, this is so exciting. We're, we're only here, so you'll stop asking. Yeah, it just became annoying. <laughs> we're just like, we're going to have to do yeah. this podcast because, man, she just She just doesn't, she, constant <laughs> texts and emails and phone calls. <laughs> How are we going to get her to shut up? Yeah, we're just so to do the we're here. So, yeah. so, yeah, what do you want to know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what time is it? Are we done yet? <laughs> Kidding. Oh, and once again, thanks for all this lovely gin. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, so I, on this podcast, I like to explore all different sides of the industry. Mm -hmm. So I like to not only interview like performers and directors, but people who work behind the scenes as well, because sometimes you guys have more colorful, more colorful stories than people who actually like perform in the scenes because you've like kind of seen everything. Mm -hmm. And then also obviously Kylie, you as a performer, you have that whole perspective as well. And, you know, being a very well known name. So I just thought it was kind of like this perfect opportunity to talk to some very interesting and some of my favorite people and just really was just my excuse to be able to hang out with you guys. Fair well, enough. Well, nice. we do kind of encompass everything. We're jack of all trades. Yes. I mean, because I was not only a performer, but I was a director. Um, God, I own my own website. Still do. KylieIreland.com. <laughs> and, um, you know, then we went into set design. I've produced and directed and you name it. I've done it. I've edited. I hate editing. I hate editing too. Oh, that's the worst. I'm trying to like learn, and it's it's awful. Yeah. I'm not a fan of it. What are you using? Um, you're gonna <laughs> laugh at me. Okay. 
uh, iMovie. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, but in my defense, <laughs> I've only been editing like editing like my vlog stuff, vlog stuff, video blogging. I haven't edited like actual scene scenes. If I do, I'm going to get Premiere and actually Mike Quasar keeps offering to teach me. But even just editing like my video blogs, I'm like, I don't think I want to do this. This is like incredibly boring and very redundant. It takes and I, a like, long time. And I don't think I have the patience for it. No. I did be I did the BTS on uh, the movie Upload back in like 2007. And I shot it. And I think this was a lesson they were trying to teach me is they said, yeah, shoot whatever you want. So I shot 30 hours of BTS on this movie. Oh, my God. And I had to go through it all then to edit it. And I was like, I, yep, lesson learned. <laughs> yeah. No, don't shoot a lot because you're going to have to go through it. It took hours and hours to go through it. And then you had to put it together. And it's just like, screw that. Yeah. I actually, I, one of the reasons I want to learn editing is not necessarily to edit my own stuff because I don't think I'm going to have the time, but because I know it'll make me a better director. And it does. Yeah. It does. Because you, then you, you start know thinking what, what you shots don't, yeah. you don't need and how to make the transitions as smooth as possible and how to stitch the story together in a creative way. Way. Who so. was it? Was it Brainy always used to say, uh, direct like you're the editor? Yeah. Because, you know, what if did you he know, say? Direct, direct like, like you're, you're the, the editor. editor. Oh, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. shots you want because you know how you're going to put it together. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Whereas some directors kind of just, let's just shoot everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a certain director we won't name names. They shoot like everything, everything. like 28 takes. Yeah. And then use the first one. Yeah. Well, let's just get or, one. Or, well, then there's there and there's that director that had 13 cameramen. <laughs> that was awesome. What? Oh, you don't know? Yeah. Story. It was Throw a, him under the bus. Uh, we, were on, we were on set uh, for Digital Playground. Um, <laughs> and it was a scene. It was uh, Jesse Jane and Chad White in a car. I've, I'll have to show you the photograph. I have a photograph. I and there's 13 cameras and two people having a conversation on, in a car. Seriously, the car was surrounded yeah. by a cameraman. And I, we were like... Wait, How wait. are they not getting themselves in the shot? Yeah, okay. Wait, were they all the same camera? There must have been like a, a GoPro in there or something, a, right? No, they were, no, they were all, they were all proper, proper cameramen. Back then. Off Craigslist. Well, <laughs> yeah, true. He would, no, he would get his cameraman off Craigslist. And so, yeah, literally, we were I think just, I remember you telling me this story. Oh, it's because yeah. it's, it's just one of those stories that you're not going to believe. There was a scene where they, it was really funny. The, the car pulls in, and you can see, like, five cameramen on one side of the car. And I just looked over at Kylie and went, should I tell him? And she's like, no. Yeah, the reflection. Oh, it's just the reflection say. of yeah. all the camera. No. All, all the cameras as, as the shot pulled in. So wait, okay, so he would get, and he would pay them like very little, I'm saying. Oh yeah, Craigslist yeah. cameramen are pretty cheap. Like 50 bucks or something like that? Probably. Probably. Yeah. I, I can't I imagine they were more than 100. Bag so, of Doritos. So he would. <laughs> Bag of Doritos. <laughs> so he would, okay, so he would hire all these cameramen mm -hmm. and they would all be shit. And was his like, just theory that if I have enough people shooting and they're all shitty, I don't I'm going to be I'll able to something. stitch together something. I, like I, I don't think there was a train of thought. I don't think there I, was it, either. It was like his first or second movie he'd ever directed, and I think he was like a kid in it. I need more cameras. But think about Get this. We cameras. were just talking about editing. So now you've got 13, 13 cameras, worth of, cameras worth of footage. Oh, my God. I, that's just hell on a level that I can't even fathom. And how much <laughs> would it... Wait a minute. And he didn't have 13 cameras, like, just chilling, like, in his kit. No, the, no, 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 the, the, the Craigslist, Craigslist cameramen came with, came with cameras. So, but they must have... They didn't all have the same... There's no way that they all had the same camera. I honestly don't know. So, I never really no thought way. about it, but... There's yeah. no way they yeah, all had the same camera. I never thought camera. about it. So then you've got all different cameras. So they all are going to look different because each camera is a different quality to oh, it. Oh, yeah, and they never did anything, you know, to sync them or balance them so that they had the same... I don't ever remember seeing anybody do any of that. They just they put them out there. They didn't sync them? They didn't do anything. They didn't, they didn't, do a, they didn't slate the shot? I don't remember them doing slate. I do can't you? remember that. But no, oh, but we were just sat back just watching. Yeah, we were just, just sitting there watching. watching. Taking photographs like, this is comedy gold. <laughs> Click. That is insane. Instagram. Yeah. That, I mean, that is That's, like incompetence at its best. That, that is what not to do as a director. Although yeah. eventually he did whittle it down to three, or was it four? I think it was five. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. It might have been five. I mean, when I was shooting for digital, I would shoot three cameras because there'd be the wide and the close, and then they wanted like a soft mm -hmm. single X cam. Yeah. Which honestly didn't make any sense because I was always like, how are you going to edit a soft core scene from one camera? Like, because there was mm -hmm. a lot of shots that you can't, like, like certain shots, like you can't get a soft core shot unless you're filming like, 
the back of someone's head or something like that. That 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 footage isn't mm-hmm. usable, and then to edit it together, it's going to look terrible. Yeah, I mean, really, <laughs> the only way to shoot a soft core scene is to shoot it completely separately from the hardcore. You shoot the hardcore. And then, like, you, I mean, you can. You can. It depends close on. Close up. Too, dirt. I think that's a terrible way to do it, to close up. Because I tried that. Because mm-hmm. when I first started shooting scenes where I was shooting softcore, I tried that. I'm like, okay, you know, we do five minutes of doggy and then, okay, close up for three minutes. Mm-hmm. But then just the, you couldn't get the transitions and it just interrupted the flow. And I realized after a time that I didn't like that way. See, now I'm trying to think of when I came into the business, they usually would have two cameras and they'd shoot a hard and a soft at the same time. Right. That's, but we also, back then, this is something that they haven't done in years, they would shoot a position and then they'd stop and shoot the stills for that position and oh, then they Jesus. would roll again on the next position stop and shoot the stills again well obviously they were using the video lights for the stills on they must have been yeah. I, I was new I, yeah, they I, must I didn't know been. anything about you know cameras or lighting back then but, but that, that was what they did and kind of frustrating and then they, that would they have wanted, stopped your momentum mm-hmm. right like I mean, and they wanted, the they always got the real pop shot. There was no faking the pop shot. There was yeah. no C to fill on the face or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was nothing like that. They it wanted weird. it for the stills and the video? Yeah. So they obviously didn't S- capture the, the cum shot in the stills. They would shoot it as soon as it was done. Right. Yeah. Before it dried and cracked. <laughs> and disappeared or got <laughs> eaten or whatever it is that you're going to do I with find, it. I <laughs> find, though, often, like, shooting the real... It depends on the guy and how, like, coagulated his cum is. Oh, but that's a bad word. <laughs> that's, not a, that's not a word that should go with cum, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of times, like, cum's kind of transparent looking mm-hmm. and it doesn't photograph that well. Yeah. So the Cetaphil actually photographs better as fake cum than real cum does. Like, I've photographed real cum and, like, you can't see it. I wonder if Cetaphil knows that we use their product they for fake cum. They, they must. must. They must. They must. They should sponsor. Actually, I hardly shoot for Some, girls. Somebody, so. somebody tweet them. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Quick See, tweet them. Sponsor. They're also, it's also a great face wash. I do use it as a face wash as well. It's a, you know, very mild and it has like no Are we still talking about Cetaphil? Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about. <laughs> we are talking I about co- Cetaphil. I collect it all up after set and take it home and I have a bottle next to my bed. It keeps my skin <laughs> nice and fresh. That's so why she gross. appreciates the coagulation. <laughs> That's uh, so gross. <laughs> I measure the coagulation and the viscosity. viscosity. <laughs> you can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> viscosity. Uh, and now, I actually daily. knew someone here. I'll gross you out. I knew someone oh, I who. Being grossed out. Oh, this is a gross story. Who, um, like, he was separated from his girlfriend for a while. Like, she lived in a different city. And so he would come in a jar and save it and freeze it. And, and why? To, to give it to her when she came back, or he'd send it to her or something. Like, I don't what know. would she do with it? Eat it? Ah. I don't know. I didn't really ask. Ah, I remember. I didn't want to know more about that story. I re- okay, so you know, like obvi- like Gokun scenes where like guys all come in like a cup or whatever, and girls uh-huh. drink it. Mm-hmm. I've seen them take that to like new extremes. Where I saw a show, a show. <laughs> <laughs> if I say show because I thought it, it sounded like a cooking show. I saw a scene once where the guy like came into a cup or whatever and then the girl used it to make an omelet and then she <laughs> ate the omelet. <laughs> there's, a cook wow. book. there's a cookbook though. There is a cook. There's an actual cum cookbook. Cooking with cum? Cooking with cum. There is a, I swear. No, we were talking why about it. Why do you it. know this? Because we talked about <laughs> it once. <laughs> why do you think, think did, he yeah. makes you those amazing breakfasts every morning? <laughs> because I am the author Full of Full English Sendbook. breakfast is oh, a whole new meaning. <laughs> How would you like your eggs? <laughs> and to be fair, he did come in a shot glass once and I drank it. That's true. But that was just him. Yeah. That's different. And you drank it like quickly before it got cold, right? Yeah, because yeah. nothing's worse than cold comes. Y- yeah, cold comes <laughs> awful. She put an <laughs> olive in it and everything. It was really strange. <laughs> I, I remember, swirled it around. I remember, I think you guys were on, were you guys on set with me when we shot Flesh for Digital Playground? Yeah, I yes. was, yes. Do you, were you there when we shot the final scene with Aria where the guys came in like the chalice and she's supposed to yes, drink it? Yes, yes. I bought that chalice. Okay, so yeah, yeah so you were. I think I still have that challenge. Well, no, because what I did was <laughs> I thought I thought I was trying to be polite, and I thought I was like, well, I'll put coconut oil in there so you don't have to drink cum because that's kind of gross, right? Um, you know, and that'll be better. And um, she was like, she wouldn't do it. She's like, I'm not going to drink coconut oil. She's like, hey, do you know how many calories are in coconut oil? She's like, that's ridiculous. I'm like, <laughs> oh, but, so but five guys of cum. Yeah. Is- 
So I was like, so you just drink the cum instead? And she was like, yeah, she was like offended that I like offered her the coconut oil alternative Here, because it was going to make her fat. And I was like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that like cum is a high calorie count. I mean, I don't know. I've never like. You'd think it might be. Does it? I think we need to know this. People need to look this up and find out what what the, if cum has a high calorie count and if it matters, if it depends on your diet. Now, see, one thing I learned the hard way was when I did my gangbang, which mm-hmm. I'd never done anything that you, when you, know. you they learned the hard you, way, yeah, the hard, the really hard way. Uh, well, and on top of it, I did everything. It was just like n- no holes barred. Um, but I did my first <laughs> DP, my first double vag, my double anal. Everything happened in that that gangbang. So right. it was kind of just crazy off the charts. But that's where I learned that you know multiple guys coming on you is not the most fragrant thing. <laughs> you get to, you get all these different like. Body aromas, types and aromas and pH levels. Yeah, and it just kind of doesn't mix well. Mm. I can't believe how little I know about cum because now I've got lots of questions about cum. Like, oh, I wonder if there are, if you're, you know, thin, <laughs> is, if you got, is your sperm uh, got lower calories than if you're, say, fat? Now, uh, he's lying. He told me this the other day. He said, This is great for a diet. It's a great fat burner. You need to drink all of my cum because you're going to get really thin. I said, and I, yeah, I do. Wait, I, is he <laughs> saying this to you like as oh, he's no. coming on your face? I, I, do, I do. We have these, all these really we. fun games that I invite that. She not doesn't want to take part in. Like I've got a great game called Close Your Eyes <laughs> and Open Your Mouth. She just won't play that game. It's ridiculous. I wonder why. It's a, it's a great game. <laughs> it's a lot to of fun. Do it fun. in the morning usually. Yeah, just yeah, just get on your knees, close your eyes, and open your mouth. <laughs> that's it. That's the that's, that's the, the whole, whole game. game. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not fun for the whole family, just selected members of the family. <laughs> My okay. husband, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I know. Aren't you jealous? Uh, you know you want one. Well, apparently I am because I'm obsessed with him. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I said that to you, though, when that day she was uh, Snapchatting you obsessively. Yeah. I think I said, if Holly had big tits, I, you'd, you'd leave me. <laughs> <laughs> She said that. She said that a few times. <laughs> she persuaded Holly to go. I won't lie. I got a little scared. I'm like, is Kylie going to beat me up? Because I actually, no, I'm not obsessed with the idea. I'm not. I don't. I don't want to take him. I just didn't mean to Snapchat so much. That's okay. That's fine. He's entertaining. He knows. So, how long have you guys been married? <clears throat> Eight years. Eight years in April. Are we married? Who are you again? <laughs> I thought I just met you on the street. Yeah, I'm just talking about <laughs> random guy. You know, you've got to keep up with the with the with the plot. I'm random guy who mm-hmm. likes gin. I'm running out of gin, by the way. I might, I might drink your gin. <laughs> you can drink my gin. I like uh, it. So eight years in April. Yes, we have a very uh, long and interesting story. I don't know what you want to do. Short version. Let's do the long version. Oh, we're here to talk. We right? could be That's here literally a with the long. T- have you ever read his blog on it? On no, we met. No, I didn't know you had a blog. I do. He hasn't added anything to it. I haven't now. added anything to it since, oh, God, forever. I haven't done We haven't had time. I haven't had time. No, I know. Well, I have a blog, to too, and I also I don't, don't write on yeah, it. Yeah, I haven't done anything on mine in forever. Yeah. We haven't done our, we used to do podcasts. We had the Apples and Pears show. Oh, really? Because uh, he's the apple and I have a great pear. Ah! Oh. Oh. We used to do like, that all the time, and we haven't done that in ages because we just don't have time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yes, the, he has a blog. He started writing it about how we met and it's kind of cool because there's a part of it where he, I write the, like the moment that we actually see each other for the first time. And he wrote his version and then I went elsewhere and I wrote down my version. And so it was what we were experiencing on the opposite, opposite sides mm-hmm. of the door, basically. And it's totally different. Totally the same. Totally <laughs> oh, the same, exactly yeah. the same. It's yeah. really kind of bizarre. But yeah, we met online. We met on Twitter. We met on Twitter. See, Twitter is good for something. It is. Twitter used to it be used fun. To be fun. I, I, I mean, I just, my Twitter feed for the past couple of years has just been nonsense. I mean, more than Well, normal. it's mostly like Americans versus British yeah, it's and just, why it's the just, Brits are better. Yeah, it's just compl- pretty much your entire social media feed. Because Twitter's just gone down the pan. Yeah. And uh, then they give all bad. these idiots an extra 140 characters. It's like, oh, double the idiots. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but Twitter used to be awesome. It used to be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, that's how we met. We started talking about Cats. Cats. So, like, was he following you because he was a fan? 
No, no, I was following her because my friend Mick back home who persuaded me to get into Twitter. I was like, well, who? because he's explaining it to you. No, it's mm-hmm. fun. And who do you follow? And I was like, she's got great tits following her. He had no idea who I was. Most of most of the, the, the people I followed on Twitter were either comedians or hot chicks with great tits. Okay. So he had no idea who I was. And then uh, fast forward for a minute to, I don't know, a few months later after you were already in L.A., and I was fulfilling some orders for my website, and I pulled a copy of uh, Babe Watch. Yeah. And he looked at the cover, and he kind of he's like, oh, my God, it's you. I'm like, what do you mean? Many years ago, like 96, I'm going to say, my friend uh, Matt gave me a uh, VHS, just pirated copy, you know, just of lots of different scenes, four movie, uh, scenes on it. it. It was called Rampant Filth Volume 1. <laughs> 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 and in it was this, was this, which because it was just the scenes, it was just edited, you know, not edited, but you know what I mean. None of the films had titles. It was just kind of like sex scenes, sex scenes. Anyway, there was this one sex scene with this hot blonde chick with great tits and Bianca Trump. And Bianca Trump. Um, it's just hottest scene ever. Which and I love that scene. I've lost many hours. <laughs> to that scene. Many knuckle babies. Many look, but obviously now she's uh, he, she was when she was you were first in the business, so she did mm-hmm. look different, blonde and I was hair blonde and, and yeah, yeah, whatever. Young. So she pulls out this thing to sign for a fan and send it to her. And I'm looking at, I'm like, oh, that's like that chick from that sit. And then it two and two, and suddenly the bomb drops. I'm like, oh my god, I've married the woman from that. Hot scene from that point. Oh, this is after you guys got married? This is after yeah, we got married, married, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, you're, you're in oh Rampant Filth Volume 1. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so you got, so he starts following you on Twitter, and mm-hmm. he starts, like, sending you annoying tweets about white no, Brits not are better all. than no. Americans. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I think we did start with tea, because I had I got up one morning and I tweeted uh, having a cup of tea. No, no, you said, I'm having a nice cup of... English no, breakfast it, tea or something no, like that. No, I wouldn't that. have gone that far. I just said tea. And you said it's in it's England, called, it, it's just called cuppa. It's just called a cuppa. But then, if was I a... was to say that, people think I'm having coffee. Yes. I don't know why I wanted to say I was doing but still. Yeah. You know, it was the specification, and so he got on me for that. Yeah. And then So uh, tea is kind of like what brought you guys together. Tea, tea. and cats. Tea and cats. And we Doctor Who. We had, a, we had a cat contest about whose cat was cutest. Yeah. Uh-huh. I won I because won. I, if you remember, I had seven cats. I don't remember. Uh, you don't remember Seven Cats no. down, oh, she downtown? Was, oh, she was crazy cat lady, lived downtown. <laughs> when, when you were living downtown when, in when the fallout I, shelter yeah, when and I, I would shoot there? there. Uh-huh. There's seven cats yeah, there? Yeah, we would usually lock them upstairs in the office. Okay, that's why I never saw I just remember your really old dog. Yeah. Yeah. Buster. Yeah, Buster. Yeah. He was, he was, he, I think he actually directed most of the movies instead of Eli <laughs> Cross. <laughs> Buster was great. Um, but yeah, we had seven cats and so since I kind of you know, play around with photography. Mm-hmm. I had tons of pictures of my adorable cats, and mm-hmm. he lost that war instrument. I didn't. His uh, cat is pretty cute, though. Lenny. So, okay, so you guys are talking on Twitter, uh-huh. and <laughs> you're, like, kind of liking each other. Like, yeah, but we, So it, when, how did, like, the meeting happen? I'll tell well, you what was scary, though, is I didn't know. We already knew we were in love by the first time we talked on the phone. Yeah. Before we talked on the phone. I was scared to death that I was going to talk to him on the phone and I wasn't going to be able to understand anything he said. Because <laughs> he's, from, he's from Manchester. It's yeah. north. He could have a really, really obnoxious accent. Yeah. What if, I, what if I, I now love this man and I can't understand a damn thing he says? Yes. <laughs> just tweet. <laughs> we'll just sit here and tweet back <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go to the shop? I do remember <laughs> when I started dating my ex-husband, who's English, um, and I'm, like, my parents are English, but... When he would speak fast, there was sometimes I'd be like, I don't know what you're saying. But then I got used to it mm-hmm. after a while, and then I could understand him. Yeah. Did you find that you did the same thing? Like, at the beginning, it was kind of hard sometimes, and yeah. now, like, obviously. And now I'm used to it. And, yeah. Um, I get girls on set, though. He'll be saying something, and they'll come over, and they'll be like, can you translate that, please? Yeah. yeah I'm like, really? I, I told Because I don't hear the accent. Right. It was funny. when I, The only time I hear his accent is when I talk to him on the phone or when I'm on the radio. Um, like, if I don't look at him and he speaks now, now I hear the accent. Hmm. But it's like the disconnect. But when yeah. I'm talking to him in person, I never notice the accent. Right. And his family has quite the accent. He could have had a really She's thick She's met some of my friends who've, who've come and uh, visited when my uncle Roger came over. He's on, really, give him, give him really, 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 he's really, really, really broad. Really broad. <laughs> How are you doing, love? You all right? And she's like, <laughs> No, the worst was that performer. Oh. What was her name? I can't remember. Ava. I mean, she was she was sweet. Oh, she was she was wonderful. She was uh, Ava Cox. I think so. Yeah, six foot 
one, I think she is. Yes. Really tall, really nice girl, mm -hmm. but she's got a really broad northern accent. Mm -hmm. And so she, she she heard my accent, so we started talking, and she just stood just mouth mouth open. I, I really, I couldn't just even. Just looking I'm just like... at her. And I'm like looking at her, I'm like, she doesn't. And then she went, anyway, I've got to go. <laughs> she wandered off, and uh, I'm like, close your mouth. But she was like... <laughs> Where's she from? Wow. <laughs> She's from, like, where you're from. Yeah, and I'm like, she lives, like, six miles down the road from where I was born. She's like, oh, thank God you don't talk like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, though, like, the regional accents in England will change within a couple of miles. Within a I couple mean, of miles, yeah. Like, Manchester, I can handle, but when you start getting to Liverpool... Yeah. Like and when we went to Scotland, like mm -hmm. the farther north we got to Scotland, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I couldn't understand anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're speaking English, yeah. And I'm like trying to talk to the hotel concierge, and I cannot, cannot understand them. I would have to get Tom in there, and I'd be like, "You need to talk to them because I don't know what they're saying." <laughs> or they have to write it down. I mean, it was like a foreign language. It was crazy. You should. I tell you what, you should do. You should come with me to a Mexican restaurant and play the game where <laughs> let's see what turns up. Oh my I god! Will, I will order something and. They just kind of look at me and write it down, and, yeah, and off they yeah. go. And it's like, I wonder what, what food I'm going to get. Sometimes it's correct. Sometimes it could be anything. It, it was be... the same with Tom. He would, whenever we would order food, he would make me call because if he placed the order, like a to-go order, forget it. Yeah. We like would... it was never what we wanted. We went through a drive. The first time I ever had uh, Polo Loco. Um, <laughs> the first time I ever. <laughs> the first time I ever ever had it. I was at a drive-through, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Uh, and can I have some rice, please? And the guy's like. What? I'm like, rice. What? Can I have some rice, I'm like, please? try saying it in Spanish. Say arroz. Yeah, so I tried that, and they're like, I'm sorry, what? And she just leant over, and she just was like, rice. And they were like, oh, okay. I'm like, that's what I said. What's the <laughs> rice, rice. But, you know, you go, I don't know. Unless he's trying to order a taco, and then you can't understand. Taco. Taco. Yeah, it's taco. It's a taco. It's a taco. It's not a taco. Taco. It's not a taco. You don't tack it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we should do that. We should go let's go for a uh, go for a Mexican. Just because I'll taco. order I'll order for everybody, and we just have to guess what you're gonna get because <laughs> it could be anything. <laughs> That kind of sounds like a fun game, actually. It is a great game. I've got another great game. I've told you about it. It's called Get on Your Knees. Okay, close your eyes and open, open your mouth. mouth. It's fun for certain members of the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so you guys decided you were on love in love from talking on Twitter. Yes. Well, we we did move off oh, of Twitter. Yeah, to, uh, and, uh, we started emailing, and then we went to I am. I am. That's how you know. Uh, I, does that technology even exist yeah. anymore? I, no. Well, now it's iMessage. Uh, okay, same thing. Yeah. Okay. So, and then you spoke on the phone, and you knew you were in love. We knew, I knew you I were in love before, but yeah. you were terrified that I wouldn't understand him. Yeah, and and we had a really bad connection. So, really, the only thing that we got to say was, "I love you," and it kept cutting out. So yeah. it just kind of became, "I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you," just to try and get like together. And that was yeah. pretty much our whole conversation. That's amazing because honestly, if I had a friend who was like, I met this guy on Twitter and we've been IMing and I'm in love with him, I'd be like, you're batshit crazy. A lot of your friends and, do. Oh, no, everybody yeah. thought that. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you're going to meet this guy and he's not going to be what you expected and you're insane to even entertain this thought. But you guys have been together for eight years. We've been so. married for yeah. eight years. So this is, when was it we started talking? Was it November? It was the end of November. End it was of right. November, yeah. I think it was right before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And then we were married. Well, I went out to meet you in. March, mm -hmm. end of February, March, and then we were married in April. Wow. It was fast. Yeah. And we got married. The weird thing was is that I was living downtown with, with my boyfriend, Eli Cross, uh -huh. and I, we'd been together for years, but it kind of was one of those things. It was like, it's a good thing, but it's, yeah. yeah. We, we knew it wasn't what it was. We right. had an open relationship, too. Yeah. And I was always really honest with him about this. And even when I started talking to him, I'm just like, look, I don't understand what I'm feeling. I don't understand what's going on, but I got to go and investigate it. And he's like, well, you know, if you got to go, you got to go. And then after I spent a month yeah. in London, I came back and I was supposed to be doing um, set design on a movie mm -hmm. and I didn't have anybody to help me. And he's like, well, why don't you bring Andy over? And I'm like, well, I don't really plan on doing that, but I was going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's how he ended up here. And mm -hmm. we all ended up, because I couldn't get us an apartment outside of the fallout shelter. So we all ended up living. The fallout shelter, by the way, is a big warehouse downtown where I used to live. Yeah. Um, we ended up living upstairs. Yeah. And Eli was in the downstairs space where we'd previously lived. And a photographer, uh, what, can I say his name? Hank Hoffman. Hank Hoffman, that's it. I couldn't mm -hmm. think of his, his stage name. Mm -hmm. Was also living upstairs. So it was this really weird situation, 
you were know. Were you creeped out by that, Andy? Not really. We, we, were, we, were, we were still on that. Uh, we were just, yeah, just high a, in love. Yeah, and we were just down there. We didn't nothing. care. Yeah, it was... It was when I look back, I sometimes think, well, God, that was really weird. I just, <laughs> at the time, I didn't notice, really, to be fair. It was really weird, though. Yeah. yeah. And Eli was like... He was very good about the whole considering, thing. Considering, yeah, considering that you just... Swe- I think, well, I think he thought that I, you were just going to be a fling. You yeah. know, that, oh, yeah, she's just going to go and she'll, you know, fuck mm-hmm. around with this guy and whatever, and then it'll be over in like six months or whatever. But he was mm-hmm. still very good home. about the whole thing. We're still friends. Yeah. Yeah. We still talk. I mean, we still, a, we still work some, on his movies and mm-hmm. he does a lot of... TV stuff. We still work with him and speak to him every now and then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. So that's really good that you it's guys. It's a really could... strange thing, though. Yeah. yeah, you know, it just sounds like it was. I mean, it definitely sounds like it was something that was meant to be. Mm-hmm. So, how did you get into set design? From... I started doing set design uh, when I lived downtown mm-hmm. when I was with Eli Cross. Um, I I did set design. Well, I kind of started doing it on my own movies because mm-hmm. I was directing for uh, Jewel Denial for. That or oh, Platinum, X. Platinum X, thank you. Um, and so Gosh, I started, you know, best. just because you, you know, when you're shooting something, you want it to look nice. You do the yeah. same thing all the time. Yeah. You bring bedding, you bring a thing, you yeah. have a prop, you have whatever, and you just kind of start doing it. And when we had, a, since we had such a big warehouse space, I could do whatever I wanted. Mm-hmm. And so I just built little sets, and, mm-hmm. you know. And it kind of just rolled over when Eli did the big movies like Corruption and Upload, that I just did that job too. Yeah. And, you know, um, by the time we did upload, it needed a crew. Mm-hmm. And because it was like a 30 day shoot or something like that. Oh my God. And, you know, you just kind of, you couldn't keep up with it. Yeah. <laughs> it was too much to do by yourself. And, and I was shooting BTS, which was stupid. <laughs> 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 oh, the stories. And we did a sock puppet version. But that's. <laughs> Wait, what? You didn't know this? Oh, you've not seen the sock puppet version of Upload. It's great. After, Wait, after, okay, so you did a sock puppet version of a porno. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. it's brilliant. It's, br- it's on it's, YouTube somewhere. Oh no, it's on, your, it's on your blog. Oh, it is on my blog, kylieirelandblog.com. Oh and just t- search in there sock, sock puppet, puppet porn. porn. How long is it? 20 like 10, minutes? 10, 10, 10, yeah, it's, it's pretty long. Yeah, it's pretty It's long. the whole movie. It's the whole movie. But with sock puppets. <laughs> it's genius. <laughs> Because after genius. after working that long and that hard on that movie, we were all just exhausted, and we just seriously had lost our mind. Yeah. And Eli and uh, can't think of his other name. I'll just call him Todd. Todd uh, we're, went in directly into editing because they were racing to get it done for the AVN cutoffs because mm-hmm. you have to get it released in time. And so all the rest of us are like left with this pile of props, going, "What are we going to do with all this crap?" And I don't. What was it? Oh, Hellboy. We watched Hellboy, and. In Hellboy, in the BTS, they did a sock puppet version of Hellboy, and we're like, we should do that. And so we took all the props, and we made little socks, and we made them look like everybody, like Derek Pierce has oh a bald my. sock and blue eyes and little pierced ears. Oh, oh. And I still have them, I think, somewhere. And so we did we did the whole crew, or the whole cast, and, um, and, the, and some of the crew, and I just... Uh, it was weird. It was really weird. So we just did the whole thing, filmed it, edited it together. The funny thing is, is that, that Upload was for a company that is now gone called Sexy Pictures. Uh-huh. And so the owner had dumped a lot of money into this movie. Uh-huh. And so we sent him as a preview of the movie. The sock puppet? We sent him the sock puppet one. Oh he, my. he was not amused. Oh, <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you didn't think it was funny? But it was fun. I thought it was great. He didn't think it was I very think funny. I think that's fucking genius. But yeah, it starts out with a production meeting with me and the cats, and then we go on to the sock puppets, and you ever do a You're sock like, we, puppet you gang bang? S- no. I've... Sock puppet gang bang. And then in, in, <laughs> instead of cum, we used... Um, Cetaphil? Uh, <laughs> no. Shaving I had fire, a, wasn't it? No, I had a can of whipped cream. <laughs> so you have this girl, and she had, oh, oh, give me the cup, give me the cup, and she flops over. And then you just see all this white <laughs> whipped cream coming in. <laughs> <gasps> oh, my God. I, uh, I am like 100% going to watch this. Yeah. yeah. Like, right and then there's, there's BTS elements to it, too, because one of the things that happened is... When we shot in the desert, never shoot in the desert, um, the director, you know, like, got his car stuck in the sand. Oh, that happened to me when I shot in the desert. And then, um, what was it? Why can't I think of her name? Because I know everybody the real names now, and it's like, yeah. Ah. Real estate agent works with Bill. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I know, I know real the star of Upload. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I can't remember her real name now. Oh my word! Oh, that's name. terrible. Um, what anyway. did she look like? She was married to Danny, Danny Mountain. Mountain. 
Eva. Oh, Eva, Eva Lovia. No, no, Eva Mongolia. No, Eva, Eva, Eva Angelina. Angelina. Eva, Eva, Eva Angelina. Angelina. Thank you. Sorry, Eva. Eva Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, how's the gin? Wow. Co- is that gin? That gin kicking yeah, in. Yeah. Like <laughs> Eva Mongolia, she was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, she was really good. She was... <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Anyway, yeah, she got her car stuck in the in the sand too, and so in the sock puppet version, <laughs> I actually did this. I took the little cars and I had some sand, and I'm down here, and you see my hand pushing them around in the sand, going, <laughs> "Oh shit, I'm stuck in the car, <laughs> sand." I can't get this. Uh, it's a director's car. Oh no, we can't get it. It's just like this whole thing. I'm just. We, we clearly had lost our minds. <laughs> that happens when you're on set for a very long time. It does happen. Mm-hmm. Which you guys have done a lot of very long, super long days. What's your longest day that you've done? Oh my word, Axel Braun. I was just gonna say. Yeah. I knew you were gonna name. We've his done. Name. We've done numerous, almost 24 hour days. No, we've done more than 24. hours. Have we really? Yeah. Because my longest day previous to Axel was with um, Veronica Hart when she was directing for VCA, and that was 26 hours. And Axel broke that on several occasions. Yeah, we'll do some long days. <laughs> how, for okay, like, how, how, how do you, because my longest day has been, I think 18 hours was my longest day, and I wanted to kill myself. But you have yeah. to remember, like, though, sometimes, sometimes on Axel sets, you've got, Eight people in very elaborate costumes in a scene. Yeah. So you yeah. might be waiting around for. So it's not all incompetence. S- yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. A lot of it's costume. In a lot of it was costuming incompetence too. We had some of that. Oh, Remember that, that, that one girl, girl that yeah, she's that... like, yeah, I got all the costumes done. We're out in the desert trying to get ready to shoot. It was Thor Triple X. And she's like, I don't have the costumes. I can't get there. She just doesn't show up. What? And no, we she had, did show up. She did show up, but she didn't have the costumes. And she, we were just waiting for her to deliver the costumes, and she hadn't. And meantime, we oh, had, because we're shooting Thor Triple X, we had to dig. You know when you see Thor's hammer in yeah. the earth, and it's like, boom, and it has a big hole, yeah. big crater around yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, So we went in the desert, and we dug that hole yeah. and a, put Thor's hammer in it. A big it. hole. I mean, it was huge, massive. Huge we spent hole. the whole morning doing it with an auger. Yeah. And... Then she shows up and doesn't have the costumes. Well, the thing is, we can't leave this big hole in the desert. No. They did so, let us cover it. They, no, eventually, we covered it up. But we covered still. it with, like, plastic, and yeah. then we covered it with the dirt, because they, they're like, if somebody, you know, goes out there and falls yeah. into it, we're liable. Yeah. yeah. So we had to basically fill in the big hole. And then oh go back and And then go back and redig it. Redig it. That sounds like the one time on set when um, you had to build a bed out in a field. Oh, and that then was uh, the, worst. the photographer accidentally <laughs> deleted the photos. Yeah. They had to go back and rebuild the bed. Gosh, she, what was that photographer's name? She was annoying. <laughs> oh my Just to God. follow me around and Snapchat me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So, once I was shooting <laughs> Emily Bloom for Playboy and we built a bed out in a field. We, at yeah, the like ranch. she says, we. We. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How much of that bed building did you do? I, you know, I supervised it, which took a lot of mental energy. <laughs> like for me to say, put it over there was. was you a were lot. so distracted with the supervision that you forgot to. Yes. Yeah. And then, so we shoot everything, and then I deleted <laughs> like half the video, like from uh. the card on the camera and the pictures. Some some of the pictures you had to yeah. redo some pictures. Long story short, we had to rebuild the whole gosh darn thing. Yeah, and, and I mean this wasn't easy. This was is in the elaborate... middle of a field, yeah. and it wasn't like you couldn't drive your car no. all no. the way up. We could to only it. get yeah. So we had and to... she wants this big heavy iron bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all wrapped in netting, and everything was dry at this time of the so year. Now. So it had all things. those little spiky things oh. that are on oh, the yeah. and yeah. they're they're still in all of our netting. Yeah, and I remember Emily couldn't get them. She had like knitted like shoes for some weird reason, and they never came out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so yeah, so then we break down the whole bed because she's like, "Yeah, we're done," and we we drag it across <laughs> the field and we get it all loaded back up into the van. It takes a long time. It's yeah. like up these stairs, down these stairs, you know. And she comes out. And she says, "Hey guys, um, <laughs> I didn't don't break down the bed yet. I forgot to download the cards. <laughs> so we had to drag the bed out. <laughs> I'm a professional photographer. I've been doing this how many years? You had one job, Paul. You had one job. I know. <laughs> I know. Never, never, never. I know. Let, 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 I know. Let, let, let. That was probably that was probably the biggest fuck up I've ever 
Really? That's the worst thing you've ever done? Well, no, I did. Del- I have accidentally deleted content like after the day was done, so I couldn't go back and reshoot it. That's kind of the mm-hmm. thing that I almost hate about digital. It's not like a tangible like piece of film like how it was when yeah. I was shooting film. So you can delete it. So I'm just... I'm par- I'm so paranoid about losing <laughs> footage. I back it up like ten times, but I'll still like sometimes lose footage because we don't have a budget to have a data wrangler on set, mm-hmm. right? So like Damon and I like kind of do it the both of us, and then there have been times when one of us has forgotten to download a certain card, and I've like lost footage. I mean, this has happened, you know, several times, and um, I try to be really diligent about it. But when you're wearing 10,000 hats on set and you have mm-hmm. a ton of content to shoot and you have to shoot it really quickly because you're being charged by the hour. It's like, it just kind of happens. I mean, mm-hmm. I get really upset with myself when it happens, but it, it does happen. That was one of the things that uh, when we, we've done a few mainstream things and the first time we worked on a big mainstream production, there was just a guy and that's all he did. He yeah. just makes sure, all I'm doing is downloading footage. All Data Wrangler, because that's yeah. so important. Yeah. You, well, and yeah. it <laughs> seems like, it seems... Um, redundant until you fucking lose footage yeah. a couple times because mm-hmm. you don't have that. So it's actually really important. And when we did DP Star, because that was like pretty much, it was probably the most involved shoot I've ever done, like very complicated, a lot of different moving parts, a lot of people, big crew. I ha- made them hire a data wrangler, data wrangler specifically for that because I was like, we can't lose any of this footage. No. And like that will happen. Like I can't do this and everything else. Like it's just like it's really important that we have a data wrangler, and I, I wish I could have that all the time, especially now that I'm <laughs> shooting these fucking 8 and 6K cameras for Playboy because I'm a fucking overachiever. I don't know. I mean, that <laughs> shit's nuts. We shot yesterday. All of us, we all we worked were. together yes. yesterday, and um, that shit looked fucking awesome. It looked awesome, it did. yeah. It looked yeah. really good. Especially, yeah. the, I love the last one. Yeah, the last that. one. What, was, was, really your, what was your Facebook post? Uh, a lot of people ask me what it's like to work for Playboy. I basically sat around with my wife throwing dry ice into a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, was pretty the glamour. Much it. Oh, Yesterday the we glamour. had to build a bed. You did. And what did you say, Andy, when oh, oh, yeah. it was done? Oh, yeah. I was just kind of like, I'm not, dis- just, you can dismantle a bed. I'm not dismantling this bed till I know you've got the cards <laughs> downloaded. <laughs> I was like, yes, Andy, I know, I know. You still have paint on your hand from there. I know, I still have white paint on my hand. Yeah. I have bathed. Have you? Yes. yes. Are you sure about that? Yes, she would not let me leave. She's a good wife. She won't let me leave the house if I don't <laughs> bathe. I'm like, have you showered today? You showered yesterday. He's like, no, I showered last night. No, that was like two days ago. He's going to be horrible when he's old. He yeah. really is. He uh, forgets things all uh, the time. Well, what we're talking <laughs> He's about? not going to have a filter. He's gonna eat. He has a filter now? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I do have a filter. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <sighs> yeah, you're going to be horrible. He's going to forget. He forgets things now. Oh, he, he, my memory's and now, terrible. Yeah, so when he gets old, it's, I don't. Just, yeah. just put him in a home in like five years or something. <laughs> five years? <laughs> five that's, years. That's really not that long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're pretty far gone, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty far gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, what has been the most. What do you think is the most difficult movie you guys ever worked on? Well, I would say with us together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, You know, see, I would go to APX. What was it for Digital Playground? Apocalypse X. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't on that for some of it because you were working for Jessica. Yes. On one of her instructional things. That was a big, that was a big. APX, and I ended up doing that pretty much by myself, which meant I loaded up what like a 30 foot it was just ball. you and Sean you had to build an entire town yeah we had to build an entire town post apocalyptic post apocalyptic movies are crazy. the worst I did it I did it in eighth day too and I swore after the eighth day I would never ever ever do another post apocalyptic movie because it's so involved and so you just have to go to garage sales and buy junk and mm-hmm. you know because you have to build it we had to build a town in both instances it was building a town that had like vendors that were selling things and so, you know, you had to make things up like this person's selling fruit or this person is selling junk, this person's selling uh, hookah pipes, whatever, you yeah. know. And you have to find a bunch of those things. Mm-hmm. And it's just involved detail that no one ever notices. Yeah. And you yeah. bust Except your you. ass doing it. Yeah. yeah. And we built that huge tent for APX out of uh, uh, Shylar's, uh, no, Shylar's oh, Burning Man yeah, tent. T- oh, God, mm-hmm. it was huge, yeah. <laughs> 
And but you think about, I mean, that was difficult. But just think about the things we did on Star Wars. That was, that was. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, it, we were we more enthusiastic. Maybe. Yeah, we didn't, but we didn't find it because we had a big crew. It was great and it was a laugh. But we but did some crazy stuff. Didn't you guys build the land speeder? We built yeah. it, we built yeah. a land speeder out of wood. Yeah, wow. entirely out of wood. It yeah. took us two weeks, yeah. and it still exists. Yeah, it's in the museum in Las Vegas. Really? In the Erotic yeah, Heritage, Heritage, Museum. Heritage Museum. Oh in my Las god, Vegas. that's so cool! You can go in there. There's a couple of the costumes in there, yeah. and we we drove the land speeder out because after the movie, it sat in um, Steve Hirsch's parking place at Vivid. Yeah. And he's like, you got to get this thing out of here. We tried to sell it on eBay, and you know, but whoever bought it would have to pick it that up. That was the problem with it. It weighed so much. It Because it was made out of wood. Well, it was, yeah, it, was, it took six of us to pick it up. Oh, well, Six it was, big dudes. Mm-hmm. Six big dudes just and to it, pick it, it up. Because it didn't have wheels, you know. No. It didn't so have anything So how like did that. they shoot it in the movie? We, 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 copied, uh, we copied the real Star the real Wars. Star Wars. And every time you ever see it, there's always a rock or something in front of it because it was just sat there, and, but it, it had wheels. So basically, theirs was sat on apple boxes. Yeah. So they were never driving in it, or did you no. have a green screen? No, but they, they were never. Well, no, they did do some green screen. Where they, they, on they, ours or in in uh... in, uh, in ours? Yeah, they did. And they did. Uh, so they did just fe- the camera face on, and there was a green screen behind them, and it, and they just put you know, so it looked like it was moving. But mm-hmm. nobody nobody remembered to blow their hair. No, he didn't. So they're, 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 they're zooming along and their hair is totally still. It's really weird. <laughs> we're like, yeah. But by that point, we were all so tired. None of us noticed it. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, that was, was like the end of the shoot. But yeah, we built, the the, we built the land speeder. We and did uh, the tavern. Yeah, we did the, the cantina. Easily cantina. And that, we, was we, massive. that was a massive set. We built this thing in the fallout shelter, the warehouse downtown. Mm-hmm. And it's. It was just such a massive undertaking. Yeah, I mean, there was maybe 40 people on that set. We, we uh, built the walls, we built the massive. shapes of the walls, and then we uh-huh. lined them with, uh, like, Rambor, and then we sprayed them we with... sprayed them with... Uh, uh, what was that crap? What was it? It's like Adobe kind of yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we had to paint it, and then we had to do detail, and then we had to age it, and I built this fabulous cantina bar. Beautiful thing. Never even saw it. No, you see it for, like, 0.03 seconds in the background of yeah. one shot, and it took, like, a day to make. Ugh. Yeah. No, it, it took longer than that. I was because I made it out of old lamps. Remember, oh, I started collecting that, yeah. vintage old lamps. You know, it's thrift stores and stuff. Mm-hmm. The really ugly ones. Yeah. And then I would take them apart and turn it upside down, and that's what I made the the center of the bar with, so that it looked like they were dispensers. Ah. And I had to, you know, so did that. Painted them silver. Hung them from the. Ce- oh God. And then they didn't even show it. I wanted to kill them. Oh my God! Does it break your heart when you have to like break these things down afterwards? After you spent so long making sometimes, them, mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes, sometimes they do because they just look so great. So you just take tons of photographs of them. Yeah. What else did we build for Star Wars? We built like everything. Yeah, we, uh, we did uh, the hallway. The stormtroopers run down. Oh yeah, the Death did. Star hallway. That he was he played big. General Dodonna. I was, it was I was actually Darth Vader throughout the whole thing. He and, was until. Uh, uh, Lex was in the movie. Lex is the voice, uh-huh. and obviously it was a blowjob scene, and uh, Lex was the penis. But for how long was for it? For all the acting, three it weeks. Was him. It was me. I did the whole the whole movie. The wow. costume was made because for it me, just and then caught. we put it on Lex. With his, Lex was only on set one day. Yeah, he was only there one. But, it was, but it would have been way too expensive to have him running oh, yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Cost, yeah, to, yeah, you know, where you so can get was, him for like you know a bag of Doritos and yeah, a bag of Doritos. <laughs> and some chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> But you God. got to do the, the, the fight with Obi Wan. I killed, Obi-Wan yeah, I killed and, Tom Byron. Um, I did everything. Yeah, and then you were also General Dodonna, and yeah. I, I was Red Five. Yeah. Was I? Yeah. You were Red Five, yeah. I don't. You're, stay you're gonna on kill, target. You're going to kill me. Stay on, on target. target. Have you not seen Star Wars? I mean, yes, but I don't really remember them because I don't like love it. Please don't hurt me. That's fine. You should try it again. <laughs> fine. Please don't Are we hurt done? Me. How long we got left? <laughs> what okay. was, most what? of the people hadn't seen it that were in it oh there was some people coming for auditions who weren't al- who weren't even alive when star wars came out and they had never, just, seen they never seen it you come for a star wars audition and a you've never seen it b get out <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know i feel like in that in our industry that's not that unusual i mean you know girls show up all the time never having even read the script no idea what they're doing no idea who they're playing that's directors ma- show up on set having never oh, read the script oh that's true that's i don't know what you're talking true. about <clears throat> who would do oh, I wasn't something refer- like that i was referring to you <laughs> i totally done that you just threw yourself under the bus <laughs> i remember i was actually- referring to the same guy who had 13 cameramen <laughs> <laughs> i remember when you told me that before i started uh, doing more like features and like scripted scenes and i was aghast 
aghast that a director wouldn't read the script before they uh, showed up. And I was like, that's so irresponsible. And then once I started doing features and scripted scenes, I totally stopped reading the scripts myself. <laughs> and and, and then make... we would come to set, build things, and we'd be asking a question. You're like, I don't know, I didn't read the script. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you. Well, I had Michelle, who was an amazing assistant, and yeah. she read the script, and she knew it backwards and forwards, and I was doing other things, so I didn't actually really I'll tell you, I'll tell no you. one knows the no. script better than the set designer. No, it's true. Yeah. 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 That is true. <laughs> that is but true. I'll tell you the funniest uh, 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 story ever, even though Axel did used to read the scripts, it was just, it, it cracked me up. So we did, I think it was X-Men, Triple mm-hmm. X we did. It was one of the two. And at the end of it, <laughs> we had to build this massive waterproof tank mm-hmm. that we filled full, and it was all like had... You know, it was dead Fancy space. Fancy knobs yeah. and like things, it but lab- it had to hold water. It was in a laboratory and it had all this... Fa- it, and we it, built it out of a couch. We, we did. We way. built it out of a couch and I waterproofed what? it. We just took the bottom of a couch and just took all the gubbins out and then we lined it and then we put... <laughs> we <laughs> Where did you guys it. get these ideas? YouTube. Wait, well, um, no, that... I think we walked outside when we were trying to figure out how to start making this and thing. There was a dead and there couch. was a couch in our back alley and we're like, Let's rip that's this about bit. the size yeah. that we need. Let's turn that over. Look at that. It's a perfect frame. Wow. <laughs> so it's this big scene, and then uh, uh, the the character, one of the characters, uh, it was Weapon 21, or, or it was Wolverine's daughter, as it transpired, is in it, and it's like a you know some kind of tank where they're growing it, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the blah, 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 blah. Anyway, this set was epic, and a really, really important, it was actually the end of the movie, really, really important scene. Big reveal, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Axel walks in, and he's looking around the set, and he's like, Oh my God, you guys, this is amazing. And he's looking at the tank. He's like, God, you've done such a good job. What is it? We <laughs> 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 kind of just looked at each other. We we're like, brilliant. I thought he like wrote all of the <clears throat> scenes. Yeah, he co wrote a, a lot of them. I mean, he always, he always read the script. It's just the fact that he just, what is it? Like, <laughs> you're, you're so nice saying yeah. that, aren't you? Oh, I've always liked Axel. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh... Yeah. Great. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys put in a lot of work, and you're always like the first ones on set and the last ones to leave. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely time consuming. Well, like Axel, what, he technically was the director of Star Wars. Well, in yeah. the, literally the director of Star Wars, not technically, really. Li- no, he was. Am the I getting of back? Star Wars. He, he was in, in name the director yes. of Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> no, he was there. But he didn't come on the set. We built that set. We built those sets for what? Five weeks. Oh yeah, and he never of... once set, set set a foot on the set. Maybe that just shows that he trusted you guys. That is true. He knew that you were going to do a good job, didn't yeah. he? Check up on you. So does that mean that if you're not there for a scene, does that mean you trust that the actors are going to do a good job and you don't need to check up on them? <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, we're going to say yes to that. <laughs> not that I know <clears throat> anyone did that. He maybe yeah. <laughs> Now, um, Kylie, tell me a little bit about your career. Because I actually don't know that. Because I wasn't working. I Was I sh- I don't. When did like, you start? What year did you start shooting? So I started working in the industry when I was 20. I didn't start shooting until I was, like, about 21. And then I was only shooting, like, stills and, like, solo girl stuff and very, like, very we, limited. We were trying to figure this out yesterday because we heard Brad Armstrong talking to you. Uh, yes. Talking about How shoots that he did with your mom yes. 30, 30, 30, years, 30 ago. years ago. And so we started trying to do the math and we're like, man, that means that Holly was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I would have been you were, 10. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And now you're, you're shooting. Now you are your mom. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I know. It was funny because, uh, yeah, Brad was the first live penis that I ever saw on set. <laughs> So the first time, opposed when, to the how, dead. How ones. many dead penises? Did you <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was, I was, because when I first started working for my mom, I was just working in the office, and then um, I, and then like she kind of wanted me to work production, but my mom was this weird thing where she would, when she would get like a new <laughs> assistant, she like wouldn't let him on set. Like she was, she hated the idea of people sitting around watching. Like, you always had to be busy when she was around, like, constantly, mm. you know? And I remember, like, she would not show up to the studio until a little bit later, you know? So we would, like, have the set lit and the model be in makeup and all that kind of stuff. And Ryko, our old assistant, 
would have had the set lit, everything's ready to go. She'd walk in the minute she'd walk in. He'd just walk around the set with the light meter, just Clicking firing things. the light, <laughs> just to make it look like he was doing something. He had everything done that needed to be done. Like he had nothing else to do until the model got on set. But my mom gets so irate when she feels that somebody's <laughs> just sitting there and not busy that um, she would just yell at him. So you always had to look like you were doing something. That's like funny, yeah. So. So if I – now, obviously, I wasn't experienced enough to really be assisting with the lights or anything like that. And also, too, I was her daughter, and I think she was a little bit conflicted about having me on set. Mm-hmm. So I had started shooting – I loved shooting infrared film. That was, like, one of my favorite things to do. And so she was like, why don't you see some, like, artsy pictures of this scene? Because, you know, if I'm shooting art, then it's okay. I'm on a porn set. I don't know. So, but, so I'm shooting, like – you know, these artsy pictures with infrared film. But, like, she doesn't want me to, like, get too close or, like, be in her eye line because then she'll get weird. <laughs> so I had to, like, get my zoom lens and, like, kind of almost hide and shoot pictures, which just made it creepier. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bizarre. And it was Brad. And Brad was working with Eslea and Tistia. And they were shooting in a bright red convertible in front of the ranch. And uh, I remember she had a big like feather boa, and yeah, that was the first time I was ever like on a like a boy girl set, mm. and it was him. So wow. it's just kind of funny, you know, all these years later. See, I, I have a million questions rolling through my head that I could just throw at you. Yeah, but if I do, you can we're totally, gonna be here forever. You can totally interview. I love talking about myself. So like, go ahead. <laughs> Don't you like? She asked me. She's like, let me tell me about your career, and I turned it around, and now I'm asking I know, her about right? hers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I was, I was wonder if it was weird, you know, being. Suze Randall's daughter. I mean, obviously, there were models there all the time. And when you were underage, you couldn't be there, but you were probably right. at school. Right. I mean, but it's, you're obviously you're raised in a very open minded, <clears throat> sexually yeah. house. Yeah. Well, so her studio wasn't at the house. So the house was separate from the studio, but the office was in the back guest house. And okay. it's funny, it's the house I live in now. Um, so, you know, I never went to the studio. So I didn't see the shoots okay. happening at the studio. But, um, you know, she would have models over to come for a go-see or, um, you know, I don't know, come to meeting, paperwork, who, who knows. Sometimes come over for dinner, very rarely. Um, when did you find out who your mom was? I always knew. You just always knew that yeah. she was a ph- like a p- photographer for Playboy Yeah, I just thing? knew that like what my parents did was for adults and it wasn't for kids. And I wasn't allowed into the office past the waiting room, like the mm-hmm. main little like lobby area back into the office. Um, I wasn't allowed into my dad's study, which was downstairs. And um, yeah, I don't know. But like, you know, when I was very young, I didn't really care because like I, you know, you don't really care about your parents' job when you're a kid. No, Before you don't. like I hit puberty, um, I mean, I guess I knew it was sex and nakedness, but I didn't really know the extent of it. And again, I just didn't care. I was Busy running the unicorn club and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so it was it's a really, big responsibility. It, hey, yes, it, it was. Huge, I was the president. We had a meeting. still are the president. We had a meeting every morning in my little pink playhouse in my front yard before school. <laughs> and our, our, our main. A tradition <laughs> that Holly continues to this, <laughs> to this very day. day. <laughs> and our main, I remember our main order of business was the <laughs> decision over what a Pegasus would be called if it had a horn because there was a unicorn and a Pegasus. And people would confuse the two. Sometimes yeah. they would call a Pegasus a unicorn or a unicorn a Pegasus, but it's, they're very distinct creatures. They are, yeah. But the Pegasus has wings yes. and no horn. Solving world and the problem unicorn has a horn <laughs> and no wings. So what if the animal had a horn and wings? Um, it needed its own name, and, and we, what was that? It, Unipeg. <laughs> <laughs> Unipeg. And uh, we tried to institute that as a rule across yeah. the board, and the rest of my school <laughs> friends wouldn't necessarily accept that, which is very upsetting for me because I like order. Yeah, of course. And um, I like things to be consistent. So uh, that was that was. I just remembered that that was a big thing that we often hotly hotly debated issue <laughs> at the Unicorn Club. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That's awesome. So um, <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't really that interested, and then once I hit puberty, I became more interested, and I used to sneak in there and steal my mom's magazines. And I remember, like, I was so paranoid that she would know that I had like 
looked at the magazines, I would make sure that I knew exactly like where they were in the stack and I would slip them back into like where they were in the stack of magazines. Did she wow. know? I she must have like I think I, I was probably like caught a couple of times or something like that. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, and then I remember I get really like disappointed when there weren't like new because I would have read them all. And then <laughs> like I'd them. be like waiting <laughs> for like the new one to come in. See, just like everybody yeah. else. We're yeah. all waiting for the next magazine. I know. So, um, yeah. And then sometimes I would steal like the VHS porn movies, but I'd have to make sure I rewound it right back to like where the it was. Spot the exact where it was. spot. See, so. now, how I, my first adult experience like that was I found my dad's Playboy mm-hmm. in a drawer. And yeah. I remember thinking, wow, these girls are so pretty. Yeah. I want to be, I want to be this pretty. See, by the time I was born. I was probably my, looking at one of your mom's layouts. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so by the time, so my mom got kicked out of Playboy in like 76, mm-hmm. 77. So it was before I was born. So by the time I was, bo- I was actually, she was at Hustler when I was born. My birth was announced in Hustler magazine. Which is kind of hilarious. <laughs> yes. With like a picture of me and everything. Like, Suze Randall gives birth to a daughter, Holly. So um, <laughs> so by the time I was old enough to be looking at magazines, um, she was not shooting for Playboy. So it was Penthouse. It was High Society. Mm. It was Club. It was Hustler. So I never actually... I, I probably saw Playboy like way later than like the Hustler, the Penthouse, mm. the... Were stuff. you ever in a magazine? I know you... Because I, I know you've done a couple shoots, but I didn't know if they were just for... Personal. Use. Oh yeah, no, yeah, just person. I hired somebody. I, I gotta, I gotta pay somebody to shoot me, man. Nobody well, wants yeah, to you can't. Shoot well, and you me. can't. Your mom can't shoot you. That'd be no. really weird. I know. People have always asked me, like, has your mom shot you? I'm like, that's so creepy. Like, <laughs> no, absolutely not. And um, well, and now th- your mom is famous for shooting herself. Yes. So have you ever tried to do that? No, fuck no. That's way too hard. It is way too hard. It's way <laughs> that's too like much the. Work. She, so yeah. she was the original like selfie. selfie. Yeah. 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 She was with her like ca- cable release being all sexy. If anybody um, knows where I can find a copy of Susan Randall's book, by the way, I would like to read it. It's hard to find. It is it really is. hard tried. to find. We've have tried. you tried on eBay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like really kind of nothing. Hard. And does she have a copy? I think so. We should, photo- sure we should, we should why, photocopy it. <laughs> why, why does it not like. Why is it out of print? Be, yeah. It's just out of print. Yeah. I mean, nobody wanted it. got. Nobody. I would love to, to read that. I think it would be hysterical. Yeah. I haven't read it. I don't really. No, because it's like very salacious. I don't really need to like read about like well, my, isn't that parent, why my she mom's got, lesbian exploits and all that stuff. Isn't that why she got uh, fired from Playboy? Is yes. Of what she said about Hugh Hefner's yes. butt. Yeah, <laughs> that was part of it. <laughs> yeah, I think she said he had a fat bottom or something like that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I like I don't how know. the accent comes I in. I don't there. know what it was. <laughs> um, actually, he didn't know that she, she thought he knew that he she was writing a book mm-hmm. um, because she kept telling like, you know, everyone at the office, like, I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book. And everyone was just like, oh, okay, that's great. You know, I guess thinking that she wasn't actually going to go through with it. And she thought that they told Hef, but they didn't. She thinks that maybe like people were too scared to tell him. I don't know. So he didn't know that she was writing it. So then when it came out, he like freaked out. So actually he didn't, she didn't get like banned then. Mm. Right. Um, but I think that her contract ended or she, she started, it definitely put her like out of sorts with him, but I think she was still like going to the Playboy mansion for parties and stuff like that, but she was kind of on the out. So then she started shooting for hustler and um, this is what got her banned from the mansion. So she shot herself for Hustler, kind of in the same way that she shot herself for Playboy, but it was a little bit more risque. She, like, did some spreads, I think. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, Larry, like, loving to stir the pot, publishes The Hustler, and on the cover he wrote, Playboy photographer shows pink, and Hef lost it. Oh, I bet. And she actually got escorted by security, like, frog-marched out of the mansion. Wow. So wow. that was the end, the final, like, the nail in the coffin. So, so she needs to write the next book now. Yeah, I know. Well, we're actually like sh- we've had a couple people interested in like a movie or a TV series, which I think would be yeah. amazing. But yeah. it's just finding the right people, you know, because you, mm-hmm. you know my mom's not that not that easy to work with, no. and um, she you know doesn't want to just like work with anybody. We've had a lot of people approach us, and they just haven't been the right yeah. the right people. So I think that'd be amazing. Yeah, I mean, she's got an incredible story. It's really yeah. interesting. Oh so, yeah, absolutely. And I can't remember who it was. I think it must have been Raylene that got her to come on my my radio show when I was on Playboy. Oh yeah, because yeah, I well because <clears throat> I didn't know Suze Randall. <sighs> Lucky you. I am like the only person that she never shot. Oh, I know. I take that seriously. That's Very personal. Sorry, she never shot me too. So. <laughs> oh, that's great. 
<laughs> but I actually never did like full nudes. I only did implied nudity. Yeah. So I never did any like full nudes. So like, so per your question earlier, nobody would have published me because it wasn't, it wasn't showing. And I assume much. you never wanted to do that. No, I, I, I'm not confident enough. Silly girl. Just not silly. Girl. If I had like incredibly big tits that your husband would leave you for, <laughs> I might do it. <laughs> but I don't. Yeah, so. he, told, he told me he, w- he would actually want me to get bigger tits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you? No. There's no such thing as too big. It's just. There's absolutely such a thing as too no. big. Well, because he grew up watching, you know, like what, Wendy Whoppers and. Tiffany Towers. T- there you go. Now we're know, talking. <laughs> what, summer Cummings and Sky Blue. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bitch fell over, just get walking. <laughs> Huge tits. And I mean, mine are not small. No, no they're, they are not small. No, they're, they're pretty big. You have a nice pair. I do have a nice pair. <laughs> so, okay, <clears throat> so let's go back to your Okay, career. now about you, now about me. Yes, okay. now about you. Um, I don't know, where do you, where do you begin Okay, with so this? how did you get into porn? Uh... uh I was I was shooting magazines. I okay. Was, I was featured dan- when I was dancing first mm-hmm. in Denver, Colorado at the Diamond Cabaret. Mm-hmm. And I was just doing, doing that while I was going to school. I was going mm-hmm. to college. And a uh, talent scout came in looking for girls for, for photo shoots mm-hmm. for to go to New York and all that. And so I went out and I shot with Warren Tang. And I cannot remember which magazine it ended up. Probably Cherry. Mm-hmm. And that was the first one. If you ever see those pictures, it's... They're terrible. Mm-hmm. And, of course, it's not even labeled with my name because I wasn't Kylie Ireland then. Right. It was just some random chick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then I remember at the time when I was dancing there, I was dancing with a girl who was also a really, really close friend of mine and who, t- who eventually became Julie Ashton. Mm-hmm. And so when Julie, Julie was married and I was married... Not to Andy, obviously. Mm-hmm. And our we used to get together because we were friends and we worked at the club together. And we would and now Julie was just the waitress. She would never dance. She said, "I'm never going to dance." Mm-hmm. And so she, we would go out to like comedy clubs and dinners and whatnot as on double dates. And I remember her showing me a copy of AVN once, and she said, "This is what I want to do." You know, my husband and I have talked about this, and I want to I want to try doing porn movies. I'm like, I could never do that. I can't even. You know, and we were just I was dancing in a topless club. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't even nude. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then. It, through the weird turn of events, I actually ended up coming into the business before she did. Mm-hmm. But both of us came in and about it. We were like a month difference. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's kind of the beginning of it. And right. it was Warren Tang that hooked me up with, and this is a story I don't tell that much. Um, do you remember Sunset Thomas? Yeah. Okay, Sunset and Zach were friends of Warren Tang's. And so he said, well, have you ever thought about doing movies? And I'm like, well, yeah, I actually kind of have. And he said, well, I've got these friends. And so he hooked me up with them. And I went home and I talked to my husband. And we decided, well, you know, what the hell, let's let's give him a call. And I flew out to L.A., figured I'd do one or two just for shits and giggles, mm-hmm. go back, finish college, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the problem was is that in the time that I was here, which was like a week, they shot me like five times. And the industry basically wouldn't let me go home. They just <laughs> said, you're going to stay here and you're going to shoot. And I entertained uh, a contract from Vivid. And mm-hmm. turned it down because I didn't know any better. <laughs> I was like, no, if I'm going to move to L.A., I want to work. Yeah. And that was back when Vivid Girls were a huge thing. Right. And I actually turned it down. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't know, it's the things. But, yeah, in my first 10 months, I did 80 movies. And this is, you know, back when you did a whole movie in a day. Yeah. It was five scenes, connecting dialogue, all in the day. You shot the box cover on a different day. Back yeah. when we used to get paid to shoot a separate box yeah, cover. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I know. Um. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. Wait, you did the whole movie in one day? Mm-hmm. One Day Wonders. Almost <sighs> almost all my early movies were all One Day Wonders. It was a big thing if you shot two days. And this is five scenes and dialogue? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we shot fast. <laughs> Wait, why does it take us so long to shoot scenes I now I don't then? know. <laughs> and you had more money back then. No, we had less money. Why? I'm so confused. I, it, it, it was amazing. I don't know how, you know, and being a director and a producer and, and then a company owner... I look at what we used to do and go, how did we do it? I mean, yeah, granted, the movies aren't great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. not the best quality. Yeah. And the acting is horrendous. In my first movie, Night Crawlers for Sin City, um, my acting is so bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm totally going to go watch that. Oh, they're it's awesome. It's so I love bad. We, yeah, we recently, 
we found all of my boxes because I went. I would go to the companies and I would get a copy of each movie on VHS because that's all there was then. Right. And I put them in a box and I kept them. And so we found these boxes and decided we, we should get these off of VHS tape because yeah. they're going to go bad. Yeah. And so we started transferring them. All and of so them. he has gotten to see all of them. All of them. Only it took almost. Weeks. It took weeks. Every single VHS, and onto, and onto then and the ones that we CD could, and then onto MP4 or yeah, and the ones that we could that we had the rights to because usually because the company was defunct, yeah, we those are on my website. So there's tons of my first movies. Oh my on god. my website at kylieireland.com. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's um. So yeah, he's seen them in the bad acting, and the, and eventually I became a good actress. In yeah. fact, I actually did win. What did I win the best acting award for? Uh, For a vivid movie. uh, Brianna Banks' Layout. Layout. I Uh won Best Supporting Actress for that. And also Best Blowjob Scene. I, I, I got down on my She'd knees be really and good I played at that your eyes, get on your knees. <laughs> I was just going to say, I knew She'd you were going to bring that joke She'd up. She'd be the best. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring that joke up. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. Um, so, yeah, where was I? <laughs> I don't know. So, you did, okay, so you did yeah. all those movies and then, um, and then you progressed and then you started directing. I started directing and I never thought I wanted to. Jewel Denial, when she started Platinum X, she, she asked me if I wanted to direct. And because um, <clears throat> I mean, in between, I had been a contract girl. Mm-hmm. I finally, I was a contract girl for Sin City, which ended very badly. And I went on Judge Judy. Fuck off. What? <laughs> oh, you've never seen that song. No. That's yeah, like, that's I think, I think that's on your blog as well. Uh, yeah, it is. It oh is. My God. As, as, so is, as is my, ta- my Tales from the Crypt episode. Well, the beginning yeah. is on my blog as yeah. well. Yeah, um, she was on Judge Judy. That's and I went on Judge Judy to sue Sin City because they did not uphold their deal of the contract. And because it was just easier, I did it in small claims court because it's mm-hmm. up to like five thousand yeah, dollars. So I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm just going to prove a point. Yeah, you know, by this time I'm, you know, I'm cocky. I'm, yeah. I'm Kylie Ireland. Damn yeah. it! <laughs> and so that's how Judge Judy finds their um, their people is they look at the small claims court, and so they saw this one that said, you know, Kylie Ireland, aka my real name, whatever, and against Sin City Entertainment, they had that's porn. Let's bring her on. And at first, Judge Judy hated me. She just did thought they give I was you horrible. like an extra fee for coming on the show? Yeah, you get like, um, I think you got like two or hundred dollars for coming on the show. But then whoever loses, they pay that. So I ended up getting five grand because Sin City lost. So instead of Sin City having to pay it, Judge Judy paid it, if that makes sense. Okay, okay, yeah. So, so they pay the settlement. That's a good incentive. Yeah, okay. and that's why they went on there. And the guy that was, in, uh, one of the guys that was in charge of Sin City back then, Mickey Blank, was just sleazeball yeah I mean he was actually a pretty nice guy but he was just he came across as such a sleazeball yeah but you know I walked in I'm in a business suit my hair's up I've got glasses on and I'm I've got all my my AVN magazines where it talks about my contract and I've got the contract and I've got my dance schedule and I've got all these things and all this proof by the end of the show she she just she pulled her glasses and she's like oh, you seem like a very intelligent young woman to me <laughs> wow <laughs> and you're very organized and I'm gonna you know she went on to rule that I won that's incredible. I can't believe you're on Judge Judy. Oh, my God. That makes me it laugh. It's such a weird thing. My, my life is really weird sometimes. And, yeah. And I, I have a book that I need to be writing. Yeah. And I just, it's time. You yeah. Know? I can't find time to do a podcast. Yeah. No, I hear you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, if we even got going on, like, famous people that we've met. And, um, you know, I was on, I did Tales from the Crypt. I was in the movie Strange Days. Wow. With Angela Bassett and Juliette Lewis and, and Ray Fiennes. I wow. had a scene opposite Ray Fiennes. That's amazing. And that was that was really cool. Oh, who's the director of that? The woman who won the Oscar. Uh, she used to be married to James Cameron. Uh, I just went right oh, Penny, my head. Penny. Yeah, no, 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 no. no, no. no, no. Um, she used to live across the way from this location I used to shoot at all Normally, the time. I know her name instantly. She did not want me when I went to the audition. No. She, she's like, okay, thanks. And so I left, and I'm thinking I didn't get it. And then I got a call, like, the day before. So I think I was not the first choice. Uh-huh. And, um, but it was nudity and I I was with a girl in porn, the porn girl in this movie that was, her name was Drew Barrymore. I think D-R-U, right? Yeah, 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 D-R-U, Barry spelled differently. Yeah. And so there's a scene where her and I are talking to Ray Fiennes about the thing that goes on your head and he, you know, we're like supposed to be really stoned and stuff. Mm-hmm. My, my role is stoned-looking girl. Mm-hmm. Is that <laughs> so what it says in the script? Yes, in, the, yeah, in, the, in the credits, it's a stoned-looking girl, Kylie <laughs> Ireland. Um, but yeah, Drew and I, we, she was supposed to be the girl on the bottom. We're supposed to be doing this faux sex scene because it's all about like 
what's the word I'm looking for? Virtual reality. Virtual reality. Okay. So you put a thing on your head and you see people's experiences. And okay. so she's supposed to be laying there and I was supposed to be the girl on top. And so you would have seen a lot more of me. The problem is, is she had uh, real tits. So when she laid down, oh, yeah. her tits just went into her armpits. Yeah. And so they switched us. So I ended up being the girl on the bottom. So if you ever see that little lesbian scene, that's my, my tits. And I had, to ha- I had to lay there for like six hours with my head hanging off of a the edge of the bed so that they could do the, the, you know, the virtual reality. They'd put the camera where my head would be. Right. So that I, you know, they'd see my hands on her and everything. Yeah. But, but in turn, then I got to be right in front of Ray Fiennes, who is incredibly handsome. Yeah, he is. <laughs> that he is. He's a fine looking man. <laughs> he is a fine looking man. Anyway, see, I got off I'd on a go tangent. I'd go for a beer with him. <laughs> oh, so That's I, amazing. Yeah, that was fun. Um, like our friend of ours was asking me the other day about famous people that I'd met. And so I was telling her all the stories. I really, I'd forgotten so many stories, Mm -hmm. you know, things like, um, well, the obvious one, you know, the Michael Jordan story. We're not going to go into that. We're not? (laughs) You don't know that? I don't know the Michael Jordan story. This is, this is the type of thing that if it came out now, it would be Massive, and yeah. you know how it, how everything is right now yes. with what's going on with Trump and Stormy and yeah. all the you know something like this story. If it came out now with social media, it would be massive, right? And when the story came out, it was it was big, but it wasn't what it would be now. So <laughs> thankfully, what's the story. Did you sleep with Michael Jordan? I slept with Michael Jordan. Yes. How was it? Uh, it was okay. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's. It's Michael Jordan. I was married at the time, and Michael Jordan came into the club when I was dancing mm-hmm. in Denver. And all the bulls came in, and I was just like, ah, oh, it's a Friday night. I'm trying to make money so I can pay for college. I'm going to mm-hmm. ignore them because rich guys, you know, they're football players, basketball players. They mm-hmm. come in. They wanted shit for free. And so I just pretty much ignored him. And because I was like the only girl that ignored him, he asked me to come and do a dance for him. And then there was a restaurant attached to it. And there's like big steakhouses. Mm -hmm. And so I went over and I had dinner and I sat with him for like four hours and just chatted and had dinner. And he was super nice. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was just, he was telling me all about his baby daughter that had just been born, Mm -hmm. uh, Jasmine. And I was talking to him. I'm asking questions. I'm like, you know, well, what's it like to, you know, do you, what do you wish you could do? What's it like going out in public? He's like, I can't take my kids to Disneyland. I can't go to the mall. I can't do anything because of who I am. Mm -hmm. And it's really sad. And I feel bad for my kids. And he's he's just telling me all these things. And he, he, he's such a nice dresser, but everything's made for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had the, a necklace. He had the uh, gold and diamond encrusted number 23 Mm because this is before he retired. Yes. It was that long ago (laughs) Uh, (laughs) before he retired the first time. Right. Um, but yeah, at the end of the night, he's like, do you want to come back to my hotel room? And I'm like, well, hang on a second. I want to call my husband. And he's like, hey, you want to go and you feel safe? Go. So I went. Wow. <laughs> and I, so he got in my, I had a Honda Del Sol, which is a very small car. And, oh my God. And he got and in And he it. got in it. And his knees are like pressed up against the dashboard <laughs> and his head's scraping the roof. And it's downtown Denver, which is a massive one-way street. And I got lost and I just looked at him like, really, I'm not kidnapping you. I swear I'm just lost. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, so we got to his room and one of the, one of the things that happened is he got a call from, um, Charles Barkley and they were talking about things and his, you know, they're talking about their golf game and, he said, well, what are you doing up so late? And he's like, dude, I'm playing the Nuggets tomorrow. I'm not worried. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward to the next day. Um, he invited me to go to the game, and I didn't go. Uh-huh. And I kind of wish I had, but I'm kind of glad I didn't. Um, next day, he, uh, he lost the game for them because he was tired. Oh. And the Nuggets actually won over the Bulls, which is just unheard of. <laughs> so that's your fault. That's so my fault. Oh my god! You know. So then the next Sunday on the paper, you know, it is you know picture of Michael. He's got his tongue hanging out and he's chasing a ball. And it's a Nuggets lose. I have that newspaper somewhere. Wow. And it's all my fault. But um, he was he was, you know, black men don't tend to be really rough or mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. They just are more lovers, mm-hmm. and that's more of how he was. And I remember he, he's like, well, you want to get into something more comfortable? And he threw me a T-shirt, and this is right – this is the weekend, Super Bowl weekend, before the campaign with um, – Marvin the Martian came out. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is before Space Jam. Mm-hmm. And all of that oh was going to break that Sunday. This is on like a Friday. And um, so he threw me a T-shirt with Marvin the Martian on it. And it didn't even occur to me that I should 
try to keep this. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> what an amazing piece of memorabilia. And that it was would've massive. Been. I mean, it hung down to my knees. Yeah. Because he's a huge human. Yeah. He, he is. And he's just like chiseled like a Greek god. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, the first thing, so we, we kind of get going and, and he went down on me, which is something I guess black guys don't really like to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, and then he realized he didn't have any condoms. So he picked up the phone, made a call. And a few minutes later, a couple condoms slide under the door. And so he goes to put one on. They're too small. So he has to call again. Oh my! God. And so two bigger ones come in. And I mean, it was, it was. You know, it wasn't like mind blowing sex. Yeah. I mean, but you still you're having sex with Michael Jordan. Yeah. You know, That's so it, it was cool, and it was. Um, I couldn't leave afterwards because I'm kind of like a guy, you know. Mm-hmm. Especially, you know, I want to I want to go. I'm done with sex. I'm leaving. Yeah. And he just kind of wanted to snuggle, <laughs> and so Aww. he fell asleep, and his leg was over me, and I couldn't get up. I couldn't get out if I tried, and so I stayed there till morning. And he's like, "Well, you want to come to the game?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't think I can," and just kind of made excuses. And I didn't go to work that Saturday. And then Sunday was Super Bowl Sunday, and so I had to sit there with my husband and my mother-in-law watching the Super Bowl with all of the commercials that were all Michael Jordan and the new movie and the Marvin the Martian thing. Oh my! And I'm just and she knew too. Yeah. And so we're just like, oh god. (laughs) Oh my god! And so I didn't tell anybody. For years, because it wasn't, he didn't pay me. I just went because I wanted to. Yeah. And years later, I was having a conversation with uh, Paul Fishbein, who owned AVN. Right. And over a pizza and a bottle of wine when we were in uh, we the Cannes Film Festival, when they used to do the Hot Dior Awards, the mm-hmm. porn version of the AVNs over there. And I told him the story. And the next thing I know, Paul started a new magazine called Sexpose, and they want um, to they want to tell the story. And they'd already written it based on what, he could remember and I just said look no if you're gonna do this I'm telling the story because you've got it all wrong so I ended up having to see lawyers and take polygraph tests and blah 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 and I did a photo shoot with a bunch of basketballs and and then the story came out and it was it was kind of a big thing because you know I went on different radio shows and talked about it and basically told the same story Mm -hmm. you know and I don't know. I mean, I don't regret it. I mean, but they were going to come out with a story anyway. Right. And they were just going to come out with a really shitty version. So I'm like, yeah. fuck it. I'll write it. So right. I wrote the whole thing. And I, I have many copies if anybody wants one. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Uh, boxes of them. Oh, my God. Well, it sounds like he was a nice guy. I he mean, was. It was. He was super nice. And, you know, things like National Enquirer were going to come out and meet me when I was dancing in Flint, Michigan. And they were going to do a story on it. And lo and behold... My story got canceled, but, you know, they ran this fabulous tour of Michael Jordan's mansion in the magazine that, that weekend instead, mm. you know, so you, you, so I was able to watch things getting bought off, mm-hmm. you know, very yeah. similar to a lot of what's happening now. Yeah. So, yeah, it was interesting. And then later, um, Richard Dreyfus was another one that he asked me if I wanted to go to a premiere of, uh, it was in Vegas, I met him at a convention. And it was funny because I walk up to him and I was promoting Sex Pose Magazine. And somebody said, oh, yeah, this is Richard Dreyfus," And he's like, oh, Kylie Ireland, I know who you are. I'm like, when did my world get so weird that Richard Dreyfus knows who I yeah, am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's bizarre. Yeah. And I didn't go to the premiere and I really wish I would have because that would have been really fun. Because yeah. I would have walked the red carpet and been like, you know, his date. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what else, you know. But I was so fresh off the Michael Jordan thing. I was just like, I, and I did this. It was years later. It was 92. Right. Three, what had happened. Uh-huh. And the story came out in like 98. Uh-huh. So, but it was so just, I didn't want to seem like a star fucker. And, yeah. you know, people would start doing that. And I was like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. It's kind of tricky. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> I could keep going. I won't, but. That's amazing. So, um, so, yeah, years later, um, I think after I was directing and, you know, did the movies that I wanted to do, like I did The Whore Next Door, which was five scenes of all me doing things I'd never done before, you know, mm-hmm. first gangbang and all that, which I directed. It's really hard to direct your own gangbang, by the I way. I bet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is, you don't get to say that. <clears throat> I, um, I kind of was just done, mm-hmm. and I wanted to quit, mm-hmm. but I couldn't really quit because I was still making a living. Mm-hmm. And I, I just kind of, I had started a company called Slut Works, which was all female directors shooting really hardcore porn. Mm-hmm. And it was right when like Pornhub and all that started. Mm-hmm. And so when I was about to launch, I mean, we actually did launch it and it just, free porn. 
Yeah. Why are you going to pay for, for porn yeah. when you get free porn? And yeah. that's when, you know, my site started going down in numbers, which my site, yeah, I used to make bank off my, my own website. Now I don't even see anything on it. Yeah. I just keep it because I'm sentimental, I think. <laughs> and, um, but, and so my company just, I ended up filing bankruptcy on it and, and closing Jeez. it. And I still have scenes. Yeah. I have unreleased Kylie Ireland scenes. I have uh, scenes that uh, Katja Kassin directed for me. She directed an entire movie. I have scenes that uh, Kimberly Kane, Kimberly mm-hmm. Kane, man, she's fucked up in the head. She comes up, <laughs> with, some, she comes up with some really twisted shit. I love her. Um, but yeah, I have entire movies, entire scenes of mine that nobody's ever seen and probably never, never will. You're never going to release them? I don't know. What, what do I do with it? I mean, now it's, they're still, they're, they're in HD, but they're so hardcore. I couldn't put them on, say, you know, one of the sites like AEBN or something. Why not? It's really hardcore. Like, what do you mean hardcore? Like, know, like, like I'm twisted. <laughs> I well, what about like some like clip sites like like mini vids or something uh, like that? I don't think it'd be. I don't think it'd work. It's not mini either. It's like you know, thirty minutes long each scene. Well, no, 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 mini M A N. Oh, mini vids. Okay. Like, okay. See, this is how out of touch I am yeah. with it. I thought it was mini too, like little ones. Until yeah, I actually started working for them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also. But, it's I mean, also, people put some fuck. No, you honestly, there's some fucked no, up shit up true. on there. No, that is true. No, that is true. I see some. There, of that. there really is. I, I, I mean, think it's probably not as it. bad as it was before. No, I think at the time, I think it was. I think now, though, as long I think as there's so. like no like rape, and like scat. And like bestiality, I think honestly you're fine. Well, there's no bestiality and there's no poop. There might be some pissing. That's fine. Um, <laughs> That's fine. They have like a list of and like things that you can't. rape is, is uh, you know, implied rape. That's <laughs> okay. I don't know. I, think I, 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 did, I, I shot some stuff with other girls. I did a, a play piercing. Uh huh. That was really bizarre. Um, I didn't do it, but I did, yeah. did it. You know, I, I came up with some fucked up shit. But now, you know, it's like, what am I going to do with them? At this point, I've been retired for, I don't know. Eight years. Almost, yeah. Because I, I did a few videos after we were still married. Yeah. I, but they were just girl-girl things, some really fucked up girl-girl ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I just decided, yeah. Um, I'm well, just kind of over it because, you know, once I met him, it was... It was just, it seemed, it did. I know that sounds so cheesy. I have that effect on women. I get it. It sounds so cheesy. But, you know, then again, I mean, neither one of us are the type of people that, you know, believe in like soulmates or Mm -hmm. having known each other in different lives. Yeah. And, you know, because, I mean, he was a nightclub manager. Yeah. You know, he ran chains of nightclubs. He was a a whore. Yeah. I've heard this. And, you know, I'm a porn star. So it's like the porn star and the player, which was a podcast we did for a short time um, <laughs> before Owls and Pears. Um, but, you know, he just kind of had given up on, you know, love. It's not going to happen. And when are you ever going to find a girl that would let you do things you want to do? And I think it, I, I, I don't know. I find that a lot of times when you're at that point where you just kind of stop looking and that's you just, when they fall that's in your lap. When, yeah. I mean, yeah. Same thing. Kind of what happened to me. Mm-hmm. So. And that's, uh, you know, but we didn't believe in things like that. And then suddenly here we are going, how do we, what do we do? What do we say? Are we saying these things to each other? Yeah. What is this? You know, but I, I do. I feel like I've known him and it sounds so hokey and so stupid, but I've known him before. And we have weird memories. We do. That are the same memories. Of- I'm just going to come across like a real weirdo. I'm just being quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. Well, she's- normally you won't shut up. So finally it's nice to get, Kylie gets to I say know. her I mean, story. I'll let it off. <laughs> well, I don't. You have to agree with some of this, or everybody's going to think I'm just like some weirdo. Uh, so, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of zoned out there for a while. Am what I boring I, you? What am I doing on this aircraft carrier full of penguins? <laughs> Give oh. him some more gin. <laughs> more gin. More gin. No, the, the, the heroin I took for breakfast is kicking in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, where am I? <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, you'll have to go and, and read yeah, his the story whole thing in is, his words. Is, is in, yeah, it's a, it's, it's sweet and touching and absolutely filthy. Yeah, like one of the things we did in London is I said, "Look, you got a porn star. What do you want to do?" So we made a list. You have to. Say, I'm not going to tell her what's on the list. You have to read it. Okay, is this also at Kylie Island Blog? No, com? no, it's on theandyappleton.com. Oh. And you have to look for a certain there's, place. There's, there's links at the side, and one is me and Kylie, a dirty love story, and it's the whole thing. But the thing is, is it's written so that if you go to the blog, you're getting the end. Mm-hmm. So you have to like go back to the beginning of it mm-hmm. to start from when we started talking. But it's all talking. just keep scrolling down. Yeah, just to scroll the to the to very scroll beginning. To the beginning. Okay. 
Well, oh, people can also like contact you on Twitter or something, and, and you can point that. Nobody contacts. They're me going on to now. Have you any idea? I'm sure I've got. I mean, I've only got something daft like three thousand, four thousand followers. Oh, and I, I what do I and have? I, I, I'm like seventy five hundred. I, <laughs> I mean, I know I never tweet anymore. I, and seriously, I tw- sometimes I just tweet the most random offensive stuff just to see because see, see if anybody's listening. You see, I see all these arguments with people are getting to bit with arguments, yeah. and I'm like, that never happens to me. So I just put random crap on there, like. No, nope, nothing. I'm sure I could put anything on. That nobody ever can. Nobody. I, used to, I mean, I was used to, used to. I used to be dead interactive, but it's just gone. Oh yeah, we used to we used to talk back and forth for hours with people we made friends. Yeah, They're really good friends. Now we met on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, and I used it for my radio show when I would do. I had a segment called "Shit My Fans Say," mm-hmm. and I would egg them on. So yeah. I'd get the haters and the trolls, and I'd be like, "Say more." You know, yeah, what yeah, else? Yeah. I'd poke, 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 poke. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. And then I'd talk about it on my show. It was great. Um. But I don't know. Enough about me. What about you? I'm I'm fine. <laughs> oh, it's nice to be here. <laughs> on this aircraft full of on, penguins. On this aircraft carrier full of penguins. <laughs> we kind of hijacked it, Holly and I did. That's okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. I'll I'll, I'll beat you. <laughs> when, when the camera's not rolling. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it. See, you didn't say anything about you or where you came from or who the hell you are. The Andy Appleton. He gets girls that come up to him. And say, oh my God, you're the Andy Appleton. I follow you on Twitter. I used to when Twitter was fun. And yeah. now it's not fun That's anymore. Not fun. Yeah. And no one follows you. Nobody cares. No, no, no people follow me. It's just, I'm sure I must be just the home for lapsed users and spam bots. Because <laughs> <laughs> literally sometimes I'm like, what can I put that's really offensive? Not a peep, nothing. No one says anything. Seriously, Boomer tweets more than we do. No, but our yes, cat. yes, the cat. Our, the, cat. our cat has a lot of followers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People interact with a cat. That says a lot about me as a person, doesn't it? That it people, does. People would rather speak to an evil cat yeah. than speak to I'd me. Ra- I, I tried to get this, the cat on this podcast, but um, he was not available, so I had to settle for you. <laughs> it's because he's home stuck in a wall. Yeah. <laughs> we're having, we're having, they're re-plumbing our place. Yeah. And so all the walls are open. We just are waiting to go home and find the cat stuck in a wall. Oh, my God. Because yeah. he's dumb enough he'd go in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, cats like little spaces. Yeah. We're going to get home. It's going to... Yeah, we'll tweet about it. Oh, <laughs> He'll tweet about it. Um, yeah, our pets are more famous than we are. <laughs> it's when you know you're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? My cat's famous. Whoo, that's old. <laughs> that's very. I know. Old. We used to tweet the most dirty, filthy things, and, yeah. and I don't know when it is when 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 Twitter changed. It was a while ago. It just hasn't been the same. And I loved Twitter. Obviously, it has a lot of memories. Yeah, we were very loyal to Twitter I, yeah, for a yeah. long time. Yeah, together. Yeah, and so we were just loyal, and then it just kind of just went off a cliff. And it's just people just it's being all, it, mean to each other, or just arguing. And it's like, that's or it's just Twitter's advertisements. Or stuff. yeah, that's another one. You know? OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh my God, it's <laughs> so crazy. I, I and I don't even follow porn people hard for the I, most part anymore. It's I, yeah. OnlyFans. Only I sometimes fans. randomly Photoshop the you know I've just got a new fan and just put. You know, I've just got a new fan. Sign up at blah 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 blah. And just not nothing. Yeah, I don't have a lot of fans on my OnlyFans, so I don't. Those but it is every other through. every other tweet, yeah. or it's just got a new scene at Brad, which I suppose that's what it. That you know, that's what I mean. That's kind of but why that's not I'm what there it was is to promote originally. my is to yeah. promote my business. I'm not really on there to talk to people. When I can talk to you face to face, like in real life. In real life. In real life. Oh, dear. You, say, you know, I, I remember the first time I met you. I remember the first time I met you, too. And I thought I knew who you were, but I wasn't sure. And I didn't want to, like, say anything and be wrong. Well, what is the first time you remember now? It was a... Uh, uh-oh. I'm totally... Now you. I'm uh, curious. I'm gonna, oh, fuck. I've got... Fuck. So it was uh, for Kieran when we were shooting Madison Ivy's, like, anal scene. You don't remember yes. before that? Oh, okay. That's the first time I you don't met. remember a lot of things before that because I was drinking very heavily for do you a remember, long time. Do you remember coming to speak on the panel that we did an all-women's panel um, about directors, female directors? When was this? Oh, geez. Okay. I was living downtown, so it must have been... 2008? That's right around when I got sober. 2007, 2008, so, something like that. Cause a I, lot of things are a blur. Because they wanted me to do... Must have been I think X-Biz, I, X-Biz, I think, wanted me I to do a panel. I, I think I do sort of remember that. You were really good. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because I had you, and it was you and me, and Teresa Flint, and... Yes, I do vaguely other... remember this. I also have a shitty fucking memory. I, like, 
burned a lot of brain cells doing drugs and drinking. So. And and then and then you shot downtown. I thought before we did. Oh that my one. god! Yeah, of course. No, I've met you well, definitely. I yeah, shot in shelter a couple of times, and we met there. And you had artwork up on the wall. Oh my god! Sorry. So yes, no. She does have a terrible memory. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I met you before that scene um, at that location when I shot there. <laughs> I remember that. Sorry, but that, then, that was the first time you met me. The first time I met you was at. At uh, Madison Ivy's. Yeah, that was, that's yes. what I mean. That's why. And I, I remember you guys were putting out the little, like, f- candles. Yeah. God, the little flames nice. and the winds. Yeah. It could, and it sucked. wouldn't stay lit. Yeah. And then we got that snake for Madison. Mm-hmm. And, um, and like, the snake, like, got cold. So, like, the, the, the handler got, like, really angry and yeah. tried to take it away. And Kieran had to, like, convince him to let the snake stay on set. It was... Kind of it nightmare. was a really bizarre scene. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was beautiful. It, it looked, looked great. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It looked great. But it was a it was, nightmare to It was together. fighting everything. We yeah. were fighting the, the material that we hung. The wind. Spent the wind and the, the candles, the snake, the and we were all freezing. And Yeah. The only person that, that was on that was song. Madison. <laughs> we had to yeah. listen to that song over oh, and over yeah. and I want to get over. high all the time. <sighs> <laughs> Whoever sings that. It was her jam. It was her jam nonstop. Yeah. While she got poked up the bottom. With a penis. <laughs> There's a story for you. Every time I hear that song, I'm like, oh, Madison Ivy's getting rammed with a large penis up her backside. <laughs> Every it's time. the way he says it. He's such a romantic. I know. There's something about the British accent. They get a lot. They get away with saying a lot of things that other people couldn't say. I mean, my mom's a prime example of that. Your mom is a brassy broad. <laughs> yes, she is. I love your mom. Yeah, she loves you guys, too. She loves it when you guys she, come over. Yeah, she's good. He he was saying, you know, remember when uh, they shot the Deadpool commercial there? Yes. And it was actually on Andy's birthday. And I told him, I'm like, you should just go over. Yeah. And I'd, say it's your that your yeah, your sister's said, son. Yeah. I was, I they would totally go, believe it. Yeah. Like, no, I'm I'm Steve Randall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to see my mum. They'd be like, it's gotta be true. He's speaking British accent. There's a British woman lives here. And I didn't, and I should have. You yeah. should have, because here you had Deadpool sitting on yeah. Susan's couch. It was funny, too, <laughs> because my mom, like, didn't know who Ryan Reynolds was. Of course. <laughs> and so, you know, she's, like, chatting to him, and she's like, he seems like a nice boy. I hope he does well in Hollywood. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, let's let's hope. He's, he's Yeah, you might do okay. You might do okay. <laughs> was, it, was it your sister that texts you and says, Ryan Reynolds is in the kitchen? Was yes, it, was yes. It, was it? <laughs> she's like, random, but I just ran... No, she said, I just ran into Ryan Reynolds in our kitchen. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when we cool. saw the commercial, we were like, we know where they, oh, I know where they, they're, they're in that field where we had to build a bed three times. No, yeah. no not three times. <laughs> well, and the great thing, too, was the shot of him sitting on the couch with the little unicorn. And I was like, I've shot so many hardcore scenes on that couch. <laughs> the couch is disgusting. <laughs> He's sitting on a couch that has you been saw, fucked on many times. You saw that because they did it, like, obviously, a, 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 an ad for a digital ad just of a picture of him. Sat on the couch. Yeah, with the unicorn. With the unicorn. And I, uh, no. Yeah, you recreated it, and yeah. then he liked it. <laughs> yes. Yes, I remember how excited you were about that. Like, almost instantly, I'm like, oh, my word. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> we knew where you were. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you. It was really thank nice you. to see you, and I appreciate taking time out of your busy day. I know you guys are super busy and in very high demand, and um, I just really appreciate it. We have time for you. Oh, thanks. Finally. Barely. Okay. I know. <laughs> before, before we go, I've got this really great new game that you need to play. <laughs> I can't imagine what it could possibly be. <laughs> so where can people find you guys on social media? And can you also tell us what your blog sites are again so they can go find this amazing sock puppet porno <laughs> that everyone needs to see? Um, you can find the sock puppet porn at kylieirelandblog.com. Okay. You can also access my blog through the website, which is Kylie Ireland. Ireland. Ireland.com. Mm-hmm. And that's K-Y-L-I-E Ireland, like the country. Um, I'm on Twitter as Kylie Ireland. And um Instagram? lower your voice. <laughs> I you know what I did the other day? I actually changed my Instagram name. And this is how much not Kylie Ireland I kind of am now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that it's been Kylie Ireland forever forever, but my Instagram is mostly about my photography. Okay. And so it's all pictures. I like taking pictures of well, lots of things, but Mostly like uh, old motel signs and, yeah. you know, things like that you've seen. Um, and so I was just like, why am I keeping Kylie's name on here? And, you know, people are complaining. They're like, you never st- 
you know, you never post pictures of yourself. It's all these pictures of the. So I'm like, yeah, screw it. I'm just going to change it. So I just took Kylie Ireland off and ma- turned it into Atomic DK. Oh yes, because and I couldn't t- fucking find you. I was trying to yeah, tag you. No, it, it, and, and, and there is, and the, shot. There never, is now a Kylie Ireland. Never on occurred to me name, that so I actually was letting my name go. And yeah. so Kylie Ireland went out in the ether, and a girl named Kylie Ireland has got it now. And I'm thinking, oh my god, that poor girl. No, that fuck that bitch. Girl. She took your name. No, oh, but I don't it, care. Yeah. Now, at this point, no, I'm never going to let she's my like website a, She's go. like a regular person. She's a normal person. She's just person. a normal person, but it's, her, it's her, just her name. She's like you... an 18 or 19-year-old girl. Yeah. And she's had to make it private because, God, can People you imagine? Tag her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Dick yeah. pics galore. Yeah. Yeah, the, the poor shit this girl must get. I mean, what a bummer to be named Kylie Ireland and then... And not be you. And not be me. Yeah, because yeah. the first thing you're going to find is always going to be her. Yeah. Or me, you know. You know wow. So yeah, but she's got the Instagram now. I just, I didn't even occur to me I was doing it until it was gone, and I was like, "What did I just do? I've always guarded my name." Yeah, you know, all my all my you know social media. I was and I just poof, didn't even care. Um, okay, don't so care. don't go to Kylie Ireland because she is a young girl who does not want to see <laughs> pictures of your dick. But if you go to you can a, send a, dick pics to uh, uh, the Andy Appleton. Yeah, go to the Andy <laughs> Appleton and send him a lot of dick pics because he definitely wants those. He loves them. <laughs> Yes, it's my favorite thing. <laughs> I'm thinking of doing a coffee table book and his dick pics. <laughs> Forward by Holly Randall. Holly Randall, yeah. The expert on dick pics. The expert on dick I pics. I do get a lot of them. Do you really? Uh, yeah. That's a strange thing because I don't, I, with dick pics, I don't, I think I would be the kind of person that would send people random dick pics, and yet I don't. That's because I, you are not an idiot. Well, I had I mean, to ask say him that. for him. That's true. You did have to ask. I think you know that most people don't want unsolicited dick pics. But I do have a very nice looking penis. It is very pretty. I did see it, I think. <laughs> oh. You guys showed it to me like in a... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that video. Because yeah, 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 yeah. I was complaining that you well, yeah, always talked a... about your dick and you never, and never showed, showed it. I did there's show it, a yeah. place you can see you know, videos of me too. Yes. It's, um... Clips for sale. <laughs> Clips for sale. I don't. Slash seven five one seven three. Is it really? You yeah. remember that? I wow. did. It. I Clips uploaded. I uploaded and did everything for that site. I because I, I, I we were talking about editing earlier. I learned Sony Vegas from just uh, which is really really easy but very good. Um, so that's why I was remember Clips for sale dot com forward slash seven five one seven three. God. And it's still there. You and guys, people still watch stuff. We just haven't you uploaded guys, anything new. You guys need to start a mini bits account because Clips for sale is dead. I don't know. You know, we we have a friend who's trying to get us to do like OnlyFans and you know to sell stuff. And I'm like, what time? Yeah, it takes us what? I have a closet full of stuff I could sell. How long have we had this podcast? And we've only just come on. It's just we just done. I've had it for almost five months. Exactly. It's just taking five months to get it here yes. from 13 miles away. Yes, I haven't got time. And we see you on average a couple times a month at least. I know. I know. Okay, so the Andy Appleton is on everything. Instagram yeah. and Twitter. In Twitter, it's everything's the and Andy. And the Yes, if you, if want, to st- you want, to want to read the story, read the story, I've not the, updated the it forever. The eternal love story, dirty love story. It is a very dirty love story. Mm. So cute, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much thank again you. for coming yeah, thank on. Thank you. Um, everyone, you know you can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And if you want to support this podcast, you can make a pledge at patreon.com slash Unfiltered, where you get all kinds of cool perks and prizes for your support, which I appreciate so much. Also, thank you to Belessa.co for sponsoring this podcast. And thank you to my listeners for listening. And I love all of you. And we will see you next week.